Diner Competition Show is back for a second season and one of our personal favorites this time of the year. The Voice is back on NBC with Blake Shelton's final season. All that is coming up, but first we're going to kick things off with the aforementioned Daisy Jones and the Six. A lot of buzz on this one based on the best-selling book. It tells the story of a popular rock band that suddenly splits at the height of their success. It's a documentary-style adaptation revealing each character's take on the reason behind the breakup. Suki Waterhouse, who plays a keyboardist, and Will Harrison, who plays the band's lead guitarist, joined our third hour to tell us exactly what to expect. Are you embarrassed to be with me? What? No. I don't really know what else I'm supposed to think at this point, Kara. It's not that. It's... Look, the moment they know we're together, everything changes. Yeah, it doesn't have to, Yeah, Karen. but it will. They'll treat me different. You know they will. And that's just the boys. I mean, what about the rest of the world? Yeah. She was sleeping with the guitarist, so they let her in the band. I mean, that's what people will think, Graham. Well, Suki and Will join us now. Good morning, Hi, guys. Hi, good morning. So everybody's talking about this series. There is so much buzz about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you feel the pressure about this? I mean, because... Everybody wants to see this thing. <laughs> we're terrified. <laughs> no, we're so excited, yeah, aren't so we? Excited. I mean, we got cast in the show three years ago, I think. It's been a long, well, been a long so time. Got, yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. Yes. I mean, it gave us more time to practice our instruments yep. and really gel as a band. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a long time in the making. So we're we I think we're ready. At this I love point it. So you guys together. didn't play instruments before this. He was very good. I played guitar before yeah. this. Okay. Certainly not as well as I as I can now. Thanks yeah. to the job. <laughs> yeah. It's an added bonus of mm -hmm. getting this job, for sure. Well, the moment is yeah. here now. Yep. Will, I think it was so interesting. We were just talking. This was your first big audition after drama school. And then Riley Keough, who plays Daisy Jones, did she kind of have a hand in helping you nab the role? Is that true? I, that's the story that I had heard. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I, had, uh, I had auditioned for a few of the roles, as I think a lot of the cast had. And I was auditioning for Eddie at that point, And I had done a Zoom call back. I guess Riley had been in the room. That's awesome. And when we finished, they were like, what do you think? And I think she said, well, he's not Eddie. He's He's Graham. Oh. And so then we had to go back in and, and audition Read. for Graham. Well, it all worked yeah. out. Yeah. Nice. It, did. it all worked yes, out. It uh, yeah. Suki, I, I can't imagine the audition process. Obviously, I've never auditioned for anything. But when you have to do a chemistry read, <laughs> mm. had you met Will before to do this read? I mean, how do you, no. how do you just all of a sudden have chemistry? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I no, I'd never met Will before. And, and I'd also done a bunch of auditions, some of which were piano auditions, which mm -hmm. was very difficult, uh, you know, just, just picking it up and probably very hard on the ears at that point. <laughs> um, but when I met Will, um, I, I just asked you to pick me up on your back and piggyback me down the hallways yeah, of, yeah. of Hello Sunshine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just to have something that we could be like laughing before? about. Uh -huh. Yes, as we, yeah. we, we went outside and, and I said, can we burst into the room? Just piggyback me up and down. And then That's did you, awesome. you piggyback me into the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so to they were start like, oh, the scene, friends. we just yeah. ran in and yeah. you were on my back. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's great. That's a great idea. It was a no-brainer yeah. for me after yeah. that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Then you helped me get the role of Karen yeah, from like, that. What are you doing? The piggyback girl. That's, awesome. piggyback girl. that's pretty cool. So, so you, you, uh, Suki, you released a, a solo album last year. Uh, but before filming even started, you guys had to perform a live concert as Ooh. the six. Does, did that give you a sense of what it's like to be a, a rock band and, and 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 everything that goes into that energy that you have to give and get back from the audience? I mean, in certain in a very small way it mm, did, yeah. but yeah, it definitely gave us a taste of it. It was it really gave, fun. It gave us like the backstage anxiety sort of yep, like, un yep, understanding what that was like. And they had us yep. in they had us in all of our costumes as well. Oh, that's and fun. we had to we had to perform to basically our bosses. A, a lot of them. There are a <laughs> yep. lot of them at Amazon, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yes, <many laughs> it was bosses. a sold out show. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Wow. Well, guys, this is we cannot wait to see this. Uh, thanks so much. First three episodes of Daisy Jones and the. City premiere on Prime Video this Friday. So good. So thank you, guys. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you, guys. I can tell you as a music lover, that show is awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Sounds exciting. And you might also, by the way, recognize Suki's co-star Sam Claflin from The Hunger Games. But in Daisy Jones and the Six, Sam plays the band's lead singer and songwriter. And he told us what it was like learning to sing just for that role. No stranger to starring in adaptations of wildly popular books, 
Sam Claflin. He played fan favorite Finnick in the Hunger Games franchise. Well, now Sam is, is taking on a more musical role as lead singer Billy Dunn and Daisy Jones in the Six. When Riley Keough's Daisy joins the band, Billy finds himself on the receiving end of some tough questions. What do you think the song's about? What do I think the song is about? What the yeah, song what that I wrote? Song what do I think the song that I wrote is about? It's about starting a new life, okay. Daisy. It's about redemption. Redemption from, from what? From letting people down. So guilt. It's about guilt. Oh, Sam, good morning. Good morning. This series looks absolutely fantastic, by the way. Uh, thank you. Absolutely <laughs> thank fantastic. You. So I was a bit surprised to read that your audition for this role did not go perhaps as, as well as you had hoped. Is that true? I, that, that, is, that is correct. <laughs> what, what, hap it's, it's, what it's, happened? It's as bad as you can imagine an audition to go, really. Um, I think I, I was asked to uh, prepare a... 1970s rock song, but my knowledge of that particular era of music, or in fact any music, uh, is was kind of non-existent. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went through a playlist or a compilation um, that, that was sort of on Apple Music, found a song that I thought fit in my range, yeah. uh, went for Elton John's Your Song, which I thought was very rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, they asked you to sing a Beatles song, right? Uh, well, yeah, so basically the, the, the Your Song wasn't quite what they were looking for. Um, so they, they came in with a guitar and said, do you know this song? I was like, come together. I said, yes, Michael Jackson. Oh. Saying, saying, oh. Then, uh, you know, so that, that, was, that, was, that was where I was starting this, this uh, journey. Um, but I've, I've, I've learned I've learned something now. I feel, I feel like so. I've been on a roller coaster. <laughs> and, and here's the thing for folks who, who don't know. I mean, you you didn't grow up singing. You actually learned to sing for this role. Yeah, I, I done I done a few musical theater um, shows growing growing up. Um, I was in like Jesus Christ Superstar, Les Miserables, but like at high school kind of standard level. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. This this was my the first time I'd ever been in a recording studio. The first time I'd ever sung, you know, rock rock music. If that makes. I, I want to play just a clip here of of you uh, and your co-star singing together because I think it's pretty fascinating when you consider where you were versus where you ended up. And I think we have that have that clip. This is the two of you. I mean, I, I'd say you picked it up pretty well. How long did it take for, for you to get to that point? Well, we had originally, I think we had about a month or four, four weeks, I think, to prepare get you know all the all the songs recorded to learn the songs to learn guitar um, but then because of the pandemic we were blessed with another year and a half of yeah. delays which meant you know we could all grow our own hair and um, and yeah basically familiarize familiarize ourselves not only with the music but with each other I think in a way that um, you know benefited the, the overall the end product and you play opposite Riley Keough of course Elvis is his granddaughter yeah um, did that ever did that ever come up during during the shooting she she definitely doesn't carry the weight of her you know uh, the, the, the her ancestors uh, on her shoulders like you you wouldn't know to meet her in person I don't think she's just a very grounding very um, free spirited, just kind, generous person. Um, but yeah, there, there was a day where we were on set in a cafe. It was a cafe sequence, quite kind of late on in the filming process. And me and her were sat there quietly in between takes, and all of a sudden, I started hearing an Elvis song over over the over the sort of speakers. Yeah. It was like there was a moment where you know you just look at someone and go, "Oh my gosh, that's your granddad. That is your granddad. My granddad is a children's entertainer, dresses up as a clown." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this is, this, yeah, it was kind of wild to, to be reminded, I think. Well, Sam, thank you. Can't wait for it. Daisy Jones and the Six is out on Amazon Prime Video today. So be sure to add that one to your weekend watch list. Coming up next, stars from another show you're going to want to binge, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, when we come back. <laughs>
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Do you love good old-fashioned competition shows? Who doesn't? Well, next in fashion should be right up your alley, or should I say down your runway. This season's hosts, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, judge a group of 12 up-and-coming designers on their skills and creativity. At the end of it, one will be the winner of the $200,000 prize and get to showcase their fashions. Gigi and Tan gave the entire scoop to our fourth hour friends. She is a supermodel who has rocked the runways for nearly a decade, most recently in Milan for Fashion Week. He is a TV personality and designer who took the fashion world by storm. Absolutely. We are talking about Gigi Hadid and Tan France, and they together... <laughs> Great chemistry. Our co-hosting the next Netflix competition series is called Next in Fashion, where up-and-coming designers compete for a chance to win $200,000. Nice. Yeah, I know. Nice. Big books. Big books. Okay, yeah. wait. You guys met on FaceTime. I'm trying. Your origin story is very complicated. Yeah, who's going complicated, first? Complicated, but gorgeous. You tell it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was um, five years ago, like the rest of the world, falling in love with the queer eye yes. cast yes. and. Um, I was specifically spending that weekend on my couch. I think I was like going through a breakup, like crying a lot watching Queer Eye, right? It's, it's very As like. Because yeah. it's so uplifting. It is. Yeah. And it just like, yeah. So, anyways, a friend of mine, Eva Chen, who uh, is head of fashion at Instagram, had Tan at the office that day. And I was like, I'm going to need to FaceTime Tan, <laughs> which is not really like me. Like, I'm not. not at all. You're not one to reach out. Yeah, like, no. if we're like in the same room and the universe brings us together and we're supposed to be friends, we'll get there. But I stalked him. <laughs> You're like, so, will you be my friend? So, yeah. she literally invited me to her house within that hour. And that I was like, moment. Yeah, I was like, do you want to have tea? No yeah. way. <laughs> and I was like, yep, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. And so I went over, we chilled for a few hours, and the rest is just Wait, I love this. And then it turns out you have a lot in common. I read, and I think we can all agree on this one, you love breakfast burritos. We love we a do. breakfast We do. We ate a lot of breakfast burritos on set of You like a passion. burrito better than a taco? Yeah, we love yes. a breakfast burrito. You like a burrito better than a breakfast taco? Yes. yes. Who has a breakfast I thought you would taco. be in this club. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm from really? Texas. I'm a pro... Oh. Breakfast I mean, I'm not taco. against breakfast tacos. <laughs> like, that's a lot. I've never been heard of a breakfast taco. <laughs> what? I've got to take you to Austin. Oh, my God. Oh. You, you were spending a lot of time in Austin. Austin. I've never heard of a breakfast taco. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I love a burrito. Yeah. I love okay. it. some hot we sauce do. on that burrito. I'm right. here for it. But yeah. I, you always would give me like the your hot sauce that you didn't finish, which is so I nice. I think I'm a really good older brother. Yeah, you are. Aww. Oh, I love yeah, this. Yeah, I do take care Did of Did y'all ever think you would work together after that chance encounter? Yeah, I exactly. thought we'd be mates. Yeah, I thought we'd always be friends, but like uh, I, well. I think that this is a very specific, yeah. great experience for us that yeah. just like it worked. And yeah. um, But now that she's done this, maybe you'll be the Fab Six. Oh, I would love that. I actually would love I've been I asking for that, but yeah, they just yeah. said, I like, that. I don't really, I would have to be yeah. your assistant, because, like, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. else? Tan, so yeah. many people feel like they know you. I mean, like, Gigi, yeah. we watch you, and we say, oh, my gosh, we want to yeah. be his friend. Is there anything about you that we don't know or that people may find surprising? Or is it, you know what, this is it? You know, I, I do think that you may disagree. I'm a lot shyer than I seem on TV. I'm nowhere near as confident in real life Aww. as I am on that TV. Makes you I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say shy. I feel that it's more like he, there's like a boundary, which I think that like everyone has. Yeah. And then once he gets like trusting and comfortable, yeah. then he like opens up a lot more. Yeah. But I, it's yeah. like. Yeah, I'm more guarded. Yeah, I'm very British. I just, I don't let you in. And I don't say I love, do you know how Americans will always say yes. on the first day, oh my gosh, I love you so much. I don't love you. Uh, I think but then, nice. have you said you love? Yeah. I love you. Oh, you've earned the love. love. No, no, but it takes some time. Like, yeah. you don't love someone on the first day. You like them. Sometimes <laughs> I do. Yeah, no, really? I don't believe Sometimes you. Sometimes I do. I, don't I, believe I throw it. that around. Really? I, so, I no. love the word love. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Love you. I love you guys. <laughs> I love it because you guys seem genuinely happy about this, right? Like, it's changed you, for sure. Like, yeah, I've and never been happier at work. No, like, we yeah. really had a good time. I think, I mean, I am a huge competition show fan, and I've watched them all, and I think you can genuinely tell that we had a really good we time. We loved it. I can't well, that. This show is so exciting, and we're really, really excited. We have some looks. Because ah! we have some looks that y'all have never seen. First okay. of all, were y'all totally blown away by the young talent on this show? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wildly. I mean, I think they all bring such a different... Um, design perspective and that's okay. really what we're looking for yeah. we're not looking for the next best sewer we're okay. looking for the next best creative director and someone that's going to really inspire oh people's God. imagination and next not just what can you find in a mall what would you wear yeah. to your office party like we want something that's really inspirational what you would see in editorials yeah, and yeah. elevated yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. all right I'm really excited about okay. okay well i know that y'all are excited because you kind of got a glimpse but three of the designers from season two are joining us now to showcase their never 
before scene looks. Y'all have not seen them. We haven't seen them. Well, we saw them last night at dinner. We all well, had we dinner. Have have dinner. Let's see the new looks. Okay. So we're excited okay. to get your take. Are we ready? And their thoughts. Yes. All right, so let's bring out DeAndre Hancock. I love that we're doing a critique. And model yeah. Kayla. Yeah, here you are. DeAndre, yeah. tell us about this look. Wow, so this look cool. is inspired by just my personality. I love to stand outside the box. Where are you from, DeAndre? To... I'm from Washington, D.C. Okay. Oh, cool. The nation's capital. Okay. DeAndre's looking hot. <laughs> look at like DeAndre. Did you also design your outfit? Yes. Wow. Just this morning in the hotel. I was, no like, way. whipping it up. Wait, what? You'll see it on the show. We pull yeah. things off really fast. In a few <laughs> hours, they can do yeah, they can some do things that would blow your mind. I can so see this on the runway. I yeah, mean, yeah, so tell please. us about this look. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, this look, is, like I said, is inspired by me just loving to stand outside the box. I love to be eye-catching when I'm out. So I just thought that I would just, you know, make something that just catches everyone's are we, eye. Are we going to give a live critique? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, so here's how I here's how I feel about it, Gigi. Okay, go. What I think is, no, I love that you've given us your signature puffer. I love the contrast of leathers. I love that you've tied in the sparkle of the puffer on your uh, underlay. I think it's so chic. Gigi, I love what, are your, too. what are your thoughts? Well, I really, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a time in the show where you nod to these pants, and yeah. I love to the see them. The pants are amazing. I love to see them on a girl. This is like a new take on those, and I am obsessed with them. I will be copying. Because, <laughs> because most of the stuff was on men yeah. uh, on the show, so I love that so you put really, it on somebody. We really pushed them. Up. Yeah, if they if they were originally menswear designers to try and yeah. you know, sh show those. Um, same shapes on women because I love to oh wear gosh. menswear. DeAndre, is this not a dream to have these two? I mean, it's a dream come true. Like every day, I'm just like, I'm just like starstruck. You know what? Yes. I can but, but also, you are a star. This you is are. Yeah. 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 How about that? All okay, y'all so step over there. We got the next. So good. So next designer, Amari Carter. She's my model. Amari. Amari serving today. Amari, tell us about this look. So pretty much this was based on a breakup actually. Wow. So I'm all about the emotional storytelling. So you'll have the bra straps here. And then I'm all about the mystery. It's like my alter ego. What? Hold Amari, on. Hold I love on. This. You finished a look. <laughs> Wait, so you're <laughs> It's so this gorgeous. Is so detailed. What do you guys think? I mean, Amari is so good at, like you said, that detail. And I yeah. love that she really can make sexy it's pieces, so but also put a kind of like a cool touch on top of them so you don't feel yeah. too vulnerable. And that's the kind of sexy that I want to wear. Right. And I think Amari is a genius. The in finishes that. of it are so good. So Wait, good. Are the so biker good, so shorts back with the, la la the lace on the bottom? Are those I used back? to have some of those. Yes, those? Yeah. yeah. The lace on the bottom of the biker <laughs> I mean, shorts. She, if she's wearing them, they're back. <laughs> All right. If Amari says it, then yes. Yeah, okay. Totally. So that's nice beautiful. to meet you. We Thank have you one more. Amari. Last but not least. Thank well, you guys. Amari of so James cute. Ford, who is rocking his James. James. James, I want to wear that suit. Thank you. Thank Look at you. his smile. I want to. <laughs> yeah, no, James is hot. He's so <laughs> cute. I'm like the old lady. Look at his no. smile. Hot. Um, um, the, tell the us suit. about that. Tell us about your suit. Yeah, so um, I'm doing my own stunts today, I guess. Um, hey. Didn't have a model. Okay. Uh, I do custom suits for the queer community. Okay. Um, so I made this because, you know, I like I, I make a lot of, like, first suits for people. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is their first suit that's really fit them, or they can't find something that's, you know, somewhere between a ball gown and a tuxedo, right? So that's kind of what I do. Um, but this isn't my first suit, right? I'm on, like, six, seven, eight, nine suits. <laughs> this is perfect. So done. It's it's so good. I wanted to make something a little more fun, and I'm, I'm like a knit boy. I love knits. I love crochet. These are all... Um, Kentucky. 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 Oh, well, that is right. a beautiful suit. Beautiful suit. Beautiful suit. It's so fun, so funky. Those are like those James it. details that we yeah. really love. And so I know cute. for a fact James also made that necklace. That's right. Ooh, so, the necklace is the necklace. so cool. Yeah, James really takes us to this like really funky slash classic world. And I relate to you. I feel like I can see style. all of these looks at like they the Met Gala. They made so yeah. proud. Yeah. Can you yes, see how talented our designers are? Next in Fashion is out today on Netflix. Happy binge watching, everybody. When we come back, I'm going to catch up with my buddies from The Voice on NBC. Don't want to miss that.
Thanks for joining us. It's Pop Star Plus getting you ready for the weekend. So the voice is back on NBC for season, if you can believe it, number 23. Very excited to host the show once again. Uh, this time around, the OG coach, Mr. Blake Shelton and Kelly Clarkson are being joined by some new uh, rookies, we call them, familiar faces to the music scene, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. I promise you, you're in for an incredible season with this group, and I had the pleasure of chatting with the coaches about everything they're looking forward to in season 23. Yeah. Blake has been with us from the very beginning of The Voice, going back to 2011. Wow. But yeah, season 23 will be his last, and we're gonna keep the fun going with two new coaches as we give Blake one heck of a send off. Kelly Clarkson and Blake Shelton are the winningest coaches at The Voice. Kelly, a four-time winner, is looking to unseat champion Blake, who's won a record nine times and is going for win number 10. He's got one more shot at it. After 23 seasons on The Voice, Blake has decided the time has finally come for him to leave the show. You've been here since the beginning, we both have. This is what they ask the greats when they leave. Was it when I married you and your wife in your ranch? Was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It was around, I think I was close to calling it a day right when, when COVID hit. And then because of COVID, I didn't want to walk away from the show and, and leave everybody in a bind. I mean, this show changed my life. I'll stay here until the world kind of gets back to normal again. What would it take for you to stay? Was it something I said? <laughs> I'd like for Kelly to, to not be on the <laughs> show anymore. Well, you said, you said that think, about Adam and then Adam, poof, was yeah, gone. Yeah. I just think there's too much Kelly Clarkson on television in general. <laughs> what has it meant to you to be a part of the Voice family for this whole time? What has it really done for you? Well, I mean, I met my wife on this show. It's changed my life in every way it possibly can from, you know, a personal standpoint. Juan Stefani, Blake Shelton. I'm so excited. I get to go to work with Blake. We're carpooling together. Obviously, from a career standpoint, I've actually read people say, you know, the only star the voice ever found was was Blake Shelton because I was pretty much I don't know how to take that as yeah. a producer of the show. Is that, a, just, is that a compliment? It is what it is, America. Okay. <laughs> okay. I yeah. love you too. This is the voice. It changed the path of my career. That when I came on as coach on this show, I mean every everything in my life turned upside down and, and in a good way. You know, this has been incredible, but it's time. You know, it's it's time for not even for what's next, you know, a little bit of nothing would be nice. Are you giving him help? The new season kicks off with the two veteran coaches battling it out with the newcomers, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. <laughs> we can make something happen. All trying to lead their teams to victory. What is it like for you to coach and work with just new talent? I love it. I think it's so cool just seeing how excited and poised these people are to like get on stage and show what they've been working at their whole lives. I think America knows about Kelly and Blake, but for the new coaches on The Voice, what are you going to be listening for, Niall? Um, I think for me, I'm just kind of waiting for them voices that kind of make you feel something, a bit of a storyteller kind of vibe going on. <laughs> get a few ghost bumps Even and then hit the button. Like Kelly, you were on one of these shows. Now that I'm alone, and cause right now it says that we did that help you? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, um, when it comes to making decisions about who's staying and leaving, that's when it's tough. The first step pleases the father. You got successful without the help of, you know, conventional radio. You're very self-reliant, very independent. And even though my boy is blocked, you got chance right here! <laughs> Those qualities, how do they help you being a coach? When I, you know, see artists out there on the stage, I see a young myself, like, you know, somebody navigating the industry on their own, trying to make a name for themselves. And I just try and like impart on them the wisdom that I've gained over the years being in it. And I heard tonight. Kelly, you took a little time off. What did you miss about The Voice? I definitely missed the rehearsals with the team. I like to break down a song and then make it a little different and mm -hmm. make it your own. So that whole process is very fun for me and intriguing. Do you view any of the new coaches as competition? Honestly, I view all of them. Obviously, the Cowboy, I mean, everybody's going to be rooting for him. It's his last season. <laughs> oh, man. What makes Blake such a winning coach? 
A winning coach? Yeah, like why? I mean, he's done it nine times. Yeah. So it, it's more than luck. Honestly, I think because he's it? just so popular in the country. I think when, once we go live in America, the, the fate of the show's in their hands. Yeah. Oh. They just vote for Blake and oh. whoever he represents because they love him so much. Oh, okay. Um, it so would be one large reason. You don't think he's necessarily got a, more of an ability to actually pick talent? Than oh, the hell no. <laughs> <laughs> So much fun. Don't forget to join us for the brand new season. It's Blake's Last, The Voice, Monday night on NBC. Hope you enjoyed our picks of what to watch this weekend, and that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks so much for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. up a fantastic pasta dish with assistant managing editor of the New York Times and founder of New York Times Cooking, Sam Sifton. And he's gearing up for the New York Times Food Festival. Ooh. It's coming back October the 8th. I'm so excited. Uh, Sam's going to be moderating a special panel with the cast and crew of the FX hit show, The Bear. Mm. Uh, so we decided to make a spin on a family style meal from the show with Sam's Amatriana, Amatriana on, on the, the fly, fly, on the fly, which okay. is from the show. But what I love about your column, you talk about this concept, and this is what we're going to do. It's a no recipe recipe. That's right. What do you mean? What I mean by that is you don't have to follow the rules all the time. Uh -huh. You just have to kind of start with a prompt mm. and get going. Okay. And, and, and I provide the prompt. And then you make it however you like it. But mm. you add lib. You add lib. Okay, so what so are we starting add with? Lib? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Especially is, if it's bacon. This is bear adjacent. This okay. is not bear cooking. <laughs> okay. I'm not carmy. <laughs> right. This is bear adjacent. So we've got some slab bacon here uh -huh. that I Yum. chopped up for that little tease. And we're going to get it into a pan with some olive oil. And we're just going to let that get going and render some fat. About how much bacon? I like a lot of bacon. I do too. Is that enough bacon? <laughs> yes, a lot of you bacon. For is good. So yeah. a lot of bacon going. And we're just going to let that render, render, render. Okay. Mm. And if when you don't use bacon, it's just mm. Well, traditionally it was made with guanciale, the oh. hog jowl bacon, right. but I've done it with salami, I've done it with pepperoni, okay. any cured meat, right? So we got that going. Next, we're going to get some onions. Okay. That's going to help us with our sauce. What's your tip for cutting onions? I go across. Uh huh. And then down the middle. Okay. Right? And always leave that guy right there, that okay. root end. Yeah. Right? That'll leave hold, him there? That'll hold everything together oh. as you're cutting. Pro tip. Got it? Pro tip. Pro, Pro tip. tip. All right, so into that rendered bacon. Ah, oh my goodness. Secret ingredient. Fat is flavor, my friend. Yes, oh my it is. So we got that going. And we'll get mm -hmm. that down pretty low. Uh -huh. Let it go until it's pretty caramel. Mm. Okay. Right? 
Now we're going to build the sauce out. Mm. We've got some canned chopped tomatoes, All right. which are going to go in there. If, if you, you know, if, if you've had some like a, a good harvest of garden tomatoes, could you use? Fresh? You definitely could do that, but I like those garden tomatoes raw. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you want to like a bruschetta or yeah. something, okay. Okay. salad. A tomato watermelon salad, that's always delicious. Mm. So this guy goes and goes and goes and goes and builds up flavor. Mm -hmm. We've oh, made some good. pasta. Okay. okay. I've added some butter to that pasta. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Because flavor. Add flavor. I'm like, exactly. that's why this is so good. Right. You, 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 you got to pay attention. The, you know, yeah. you really want to get some nice plushness. And it's really like five ingredients, too. It's nothing. But it tastes so, it's so layered. And, and do you, can you, is there any pasta you could use? Or? Yeah, you could use a bucatini if you can find any, uh -huh. or a spaghetti, or, you know, you could do this with shells and have a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. So we get that going around, right. okay. and then what we're going to do when we're done mm -hmm. and we're happy with it is hit it with some Pecorino Romano. Oh, oh, okay. Pecorino okay. Romano. More flavor. Mm -hmm. More yeah. flavor. Some red pepper flakes. Oh. Okay. And some chopped parsley I because... Wonder. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you add the pasta water to that as well? I'll add a little bit of pasta water okay. in there just to loosen things up if it gets tight. It's delicious. Okay. Hey, hey, Sam, talk, talk to us about uh, the festival coming up. Oh, yeah. We're really excited. Um, we started the festival a couple of years ago. We missed a year or two mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, and now we're back in Damrush Park in Lincoln Center. We're going to have a okay, ton so of great chefs coming in. Mm -hmm. We sold out tickets in the first tranche, but wow. we're putting a new set on on September 22nd for sale. And then for those who can't make it to New York, mm -hmm. we're going out on the road with oh, some good. of our, with oh, Melissa wow. Park and oh, others, some of our best of our chefs. Faves. And we're going to cook with some of America's greatest chefs on the road. And you That's can awesome. cook at home with cooking kits from the New York Times store. That's awesome. Right. Al That's always good. raves yeah. about recipes it's from the, the New York Times. Customer. It's, it's, it's the, the thing that I, I go to all the time, right after uh, Today Food. I <laughs> 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 the New York Times cooking, we're giving you a run. This there is you go. fantastic. Sam Sifton, always love when you're here. Thanks so, so much. Good. This morning in today's food on a twist, an Italian classic here to make pasta cacio e walnuts. Oh. Chef and cookbook <laughs> author Carla Lali Music. I wish there were smell of vision. It's, I, it, yeah. it smells so Amazing. good here. Her new cookbook is called That Sounds So Good and This Sounds So Love Good. Carla, good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, so girl. start us off here because cacio e pepe you've always heard of, but sure. cacio e walnut, what are we talking about? I know, here? and not like cacio e pepe needed improvement <laughs> as a classic, <laughs> but a couple of things that can go wrong for people. One is is that the cheese doesn't melt yeah. because oh, it's so those it's hard grating grating cheeses. So mm -hmm. I changed up the cheese. And for me, like, it's great, all those textures. It's like adult mac and cheese, mm -hmm. but I need a little crunch. Okay. Yeah. So we've got pasta boiling. That's going to come in. Just keep an eye on that. Okay. And I just like to crush the garlic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind of pasta, by the way. I like a big tube for this, okay. and but you can really use anything. Like um, spaghetti would be fine, but I like with a big tube. Some of these pieces will get inside oh, the tube. Get, and they get the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you get like a little secret. Um, Wait, you didn't so crush them as much. Okay. No. So these are just going to toast, kind of like that, and I'll press down on them while they're going or maybe mm. one of you will press down okay. while they're going and then instead of toasting the walnuts in the oven I 
toast them in the pan with the oil and the garlic. Oh. So they kind of pick up all those flavors mm -hmm. and infuse. And that really gives a crunch. Um, so another thing that's classic with cacio e pepe is that you would use a sheep's milk cheese, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, pecorino or pecorino and parm. Mm -hmm. But what can happen is those cheeses, like, they like to clump up yes, when they're it's melting. it's so frustrating. Yeah. So I, I have a fettuccine Alfredo it. recipe that is great, but it's very similar. The cheese clumps up on people. Mm -hmm. So for this, that was really in my mind, and I wanted to solve for it. So instead of using pecorino, I switched it to manchego. Oh, we went oh. to Spain. Oh. We went okay. to Spain. Oh, so a little okay. bit with the walnuts mm -hmm. and the manchego goes like, yeah, now we're on a like a European siesta. Oh, I love we're that just idea. going across. Could yeah. you use another nut to... other than walnut? Totally. Yeah. So my book has spinets for every single recipe. So <laughs> you could use pecans, you could use almonds, you could mm. use cashews, you could really okay. use whatever you want as long as it's got crunch, even pistachios. So importantly here, why don't you grate okay. uh, or crack a lot of pepper in there right. because the pepe is the pepper. Uh, and without yeah. that, like it's not cacho pepe, it's oh, not okay. cacho walnut. Mm -hmm. And more? also putting, yeah, more. Oh, the okay. Putting yeah. the pepper Did I hear in. What kind of oil you said yeah. you use? Extra virgin olive oil. Virgin olive oil. Yeah. And, and why is the pasta water so important? So pasta water is really important because the oil and the pasta themselves with the cheese, things will melt, but they're never going to get creamy. So you really need that water. So let's see. How is our pasta? Let's it's give not it, quite done yet. Not but quite done. I don't know if we have time We're, to wait for it to finish. Drop one in here. Let's see. All right. So with the pasta water, the kind of brilliant thing that happens is it creates this like available liquid for the cheese to melt into oh. so fat like any emulsion fat and water like they need mm -hmm. they need both to be there in order to make something creamy how much water by the way mm. 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 Like pretty good, good? Yeah. Okay. if you cool. want to do that Calvin's my noodle tester at home <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> that's kind of scooby yeah, yeah mm. totally um, I mean I feel like the water part is all a feel it is yeah I don't know I'm sorry I usually more. scoop out and using the um the measuring cup, You're you right. can take out a cup or a cup and a half, yeah. but something nice about using a strainer is that you don't dump the water first. So yeah, you right. kinda, if you need to go back, you can. But hot tip, if you forget about the pasta water yeah. and you use tap, oh, it's go. totally okay. fine. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, right. yeah. Um, put a cup in there. Let's dump the put pasta the right in here. Okay. I like to build the whole sauce in something deep like this. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. Good. Amazing. And, the cheese, is that okay? and then we're going, yeah, because okay. they're all going to end up in the same mm -hmm. place. So using something deep like this mm -hmm. gives Oh, you room yeah. to stir oh. and toss and right. go and without. Then you're end up with something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So that melts side. gradually. Yeah. You end up there over you here. Go. You guys definitely need to get it. in there. With pleasure. Dylan, Dylan loves this. <laughs> okay. This is her favorite. This is my Very favorite. Nice. I mean, I want to plan a trip to Italy just to <laughs> eat cacio e pepe. And, and really it should look such a really good. creamy and saucy. So a with nice something salad. rich and cheesy like this, I love a simple uh -huh. salad. Oh my This is my big batch vinaigrette. It's the vinaigrette I grew up eating. We always had a bottle of it on the counter. Really simple: mustard, olive oil, a couple kinds of vinegar. My mom always put balsamic and oh shallot. God. Put it in the blender or the Cuisinart. Mm -hmm. You end up with this beautiful oh, concoction. Go ahead and swirl, and it's creamy. You can keep it in the you fridge, make it look so easy. and then it's not a big deal to make a salad because your dressing is already mm. done. How long does this last in the fridge? The Many ma weeks in the fridge. Weeks? For right. sure, yeah. 100%. I was a, I was a yeah. fan of Cacio yes. Pepe. This has definitely taken it up a notch. Amazing. Um, yeah, thanks, it's Carla. that little bit of crunch. And, and the salt. crunch and the toastiness in the walnuts. Yeah. It's yeah. Like what it needed. Yeah. Plus yeah. Gar garlic. We what kind of wine would you recommend with this? Because like, I Actually, something pasta. white and bright, like a Friuli or something like that. Carla, thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to check out her new cookbook. That sounds so good. Good. Trust me, it is. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Joining us with budget-friendly meals that you can make for dinner tonight is an expert chef, Frankie Salenza. He's the host of the Taste Maid's hit series, Struggle Meals, where he creates gourmet dishes that will not break the bank. Frankie, you're just what the doctor ordered today. We need you. What are you going to make hey, for Hey, I got us? all five of you. Good morning. Good morning, Hi. Frankie. Super cool. <laughs> what you going to make? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a mushroom cavatelli pasta. Mm -hmm. So I can show you that real quick. Obviously, pasta is super affordable, but if you just go buy semolina, which is a high gluten flour, um, you can make pasta with just semolina and water. Ooh. Am I allowed to say gluten on air? Is that sure, like yes, yeah, no, you're okay. okay. So you can okay. do it. How so you literally just combine those, and then and then you can roll out sort of a snake here. Wow. Cut these up like this. Bing, 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 and then with your with your knife. You can just kind of windshield wiper. You oh, see that? Yeah. yeah. And you get these things called cavatelli, 
because it means little hollows. And if you think of like cavity, for example, oh. the, you know, the Latin root cavity, cavitelli, cavity is a hole in your tooth. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, makes this whole thing budget friendly? So really, there's, listen, there's a whole bunch of ways to save money. One of the biggest ones that people overlook because we live in the future and everything is available all the time is cooking in season. If you're cooking in season, it's not being transported long distance to get to you. Like, that's a great point. I don't know. Carson, would you go down to Argentina right now with the price of flights? Yes, I probably would. <laughs> if Jeff Blue went, would? I'm okay. Well, yeah. if you want asparagus right now, it's yeah. coming from Argentina and right. you're paying for it to get on a plane flight. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. That's no good. No. So, right. right. Eat, Seasonal eat selections beets, are for close. example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, a rag here. You just roast the beet. Mm-hmm. And hopefully this works because I did cook these last night. But essentially, if you just get a rag that you dedicate to this and, and use the friction of the rag, Wait, sort of this is the twist. Here. Yeah, oh. you twist the you twist the beet inside. Uh-huh. Is a bird going to come get, out of there? Yeah. You see it like, oh, what? what? Oh, what? Yeah, That's a cool. pro so, magic. So beets are in season. They're a root vegetable. So is citrus. You can make a gorgeous citrus beet salad. Mm. Can I ask a dumb question, Frankie? Is there like a website or a place you could learn where things are in season? Like, I have no idea. Just go to the grocery store. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's this whole like thing that we have in the palm of our hand with all of mankind's knowledge. And you can just say winter vegetables and you'll oh. find that it's <laughs> so root vegetables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Cruciferous right. vegetables, root it. vegetables, right. citrus. Mushrooms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be. No, I deserve that. It was dumb. I told you it was dumb. (laughs) Okay. We'll go back. So so that's a beet salad. Go ahead. Where's the mushroom come in on the pasta? Different dish. So we've got our mushroom here. I cooked them naked in the pan. Got it. And then I added some fat after. It's Mm. sort of counterintuitive. You want to dehydrate a mushroom so that then you can infuse it with fat, which is flavor. Mm. So I cooked it naked in the pan. They shriveled up. Water came out. Mm. Threw the butter and or olive oil in there. And now we've got, you know, we've got this mushroom. Okay, so there's mushroom. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The mushrooms go into the cavities. And you're saying making your homemade pasta, that was, I mean, that was a good budget move too, right? It's a good budget move. Pasta's pretty affordable anyway, to be honest with Mm -hmm. you. So, like, if you want to use a boxed pasta, Mm -hmm. the thing is to just pair Mm. it with in-season ingredients. I want to eat that. It's not a problem at all. Hey, Frankie, does does homemade pasta, does it change the cooking time? Yeah, it's a lot faster. So I put these in right at the start of the segment. They've got a self-timer built in. They float to the top when they're done. Oh. If uh, if you see it, it Frankie, takes like, you know, between Frankie, two and three minutes. You're an oh, A-plus guest. We want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. You're great. You can find uh, rest- this recipe at today.com slash food, and you catch Frankie's show. Check it out. It's called Struggle Meals. It's Thursdays on Tastemade. Thank you, Frankie. Struggle Come back meal. at a person next time, Frankie. Come yeah. back, Frankie.
We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's hey, an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are, yeah. what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's gonna be rigatoni. It's gonna be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rob, and some tomato mm -hmm. sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm gonna start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pig sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do we'll to it? What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so basically, you're making like the creamy tomato sauce with the, with the hot Italian sausage. And then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to take this sauce. And I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to... We're going to cover the, uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And mm. I love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, degrees. how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, and the, and, the, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. around the stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you always want to part of it? You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for, I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up. And then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to broil. Mm -hmm. Pour mm -hmm. and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your, uh, Take out your, your pasta, and you can see this is what it's going to look like. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm that's talking about. Over here. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make Fresh this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, make, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I mean, it. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Be Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. But I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome you know you know chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, you usually have like all these. They have like viewing parties in their in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last. I don't know. Does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. 
Um, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You're, you've actually done your research because Christi- Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So, but get the sausage out of here. She's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there. As well, <laughs> well hey, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah, like, okay. Then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, yeah. so she's yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll all right. Thanks, Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Hey, we can catch Thanks, an all buddy. new episode of Beat Bobby Flay tonight on Food Network and get Bobby's recipes on our website today.com slash food. Ooh, the answer's gone. Missy Robbins is a James Beard award-winning chef and owner of Lilia and Missy Restaurants. She's out with her second book called Pasta, the Spirit and Craft of Italy's Greatest Food. Missy's right here near us in Brooklyn uh-huh. in her kitchen right now. Missy, by the way, you were a home run on the 8 o'clock hour. We're still talking about that breakfast pasta. Oh, we uh-huh. get it. No, we want it. We want <laughs> you to come make it for us. But for us, you're going to make... I, I will do that anytime I'm allowed. Yay. I love it. Okay, so you're making a broccoli pesto. This mm. is one of your favorites. Tell us why. Yeah, this one. This one's a little later than the last segment where we did carbonara, and I, I, I bragged about how rich it is. Okay. This one's a little later. Um, there's a few reasons I love this. One, it's it's got broccoli. It's healthy. It's I developed this when when I was trying to eat healthier and wanted to include more vegetables. And okay. how do I do that but still have a little pasta? So it starts with it starts with you can use broccoli. You can use broccoli rabe. In my in my recipe, I have both. Um, you kind of just separate the florets, the mm-hmm. leaves, and then um, blanch it, shock it, chop it. So that's a, a, just a quick cook. Um, and you end up with this. Um, and then the leaves and basil, you also mm. blanch and do a puree. Okay. Um, and then we use pecorino. Mm. We use parmigiano. So it's still so got the all yummy the stuff in there. Traditional, yeah, yeah, all the yummy stuff. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not like... You Can know, I ask diet. real quick about that pesto? You was that a pesto you poured in? Is that what the basil was? That that was that was just a puree. Puree. Um, okay. And then this is olive oil, which will mm. kind of bind it all together. Mm. And then the gnocchi. One of the reasons I love them, I think, I think a you can make them ahead of time. You can you can make them. You can cook them ahead of time and hold them overnight. This is a ricotta gnocchi Ooh. that's uh, really foolproof. Yum. Like you, you cannot screw this up. So and, should you just and, not buy the, uh, you know, the frozen okay. ones and 
Do I need you to do the real thing? You should never buy, never. Is that never, horrible ever. of me? Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Ever. I won't buy the frozen ones anymore. <laughs> This is just so easy, and I, I love it also because it's great to make with kids. Mm. Really great to make with kids. It's an easy one. Um, I roll this dough out into ropes, you see, uh -huh. and then I cut them into pieces. Mm. And then if you want a little extra fancy, you go, um, you want to make sure there's enough flour so they don't stick. This dough can uh -huh. get a little sticky. And we have this little paddle, very traditional uh -huh. gnocchi board, um, and you just kind of roll it down uh -huh. like this. Uh, also, like, really fun for kids, like great hand-eye coordination. Ah. Um, oh, and, I, and then, once, you, uh, once you taste those, you probably can't go back. So I guess I can see that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and they're just easier than potato gnocchi. So I have them cooking in back. It's really hard. Like with traditional pasta, egg pasta, it's so delicate. It's pretty hard to screw these guys up. <laughs> like they, you want to cook them till they float to the top, but if they float and they cook another one or two minutes, you're okay. You're going to end up with something very, very light. That's okay. the other thing with these. There's a lot of cheese. Um, I have my broccoli pesto on the Oof. stove here. Um, Yum. And and just and and it's got a little pasta water to loosen it up. So mm -hmm. pasta water is a really important ingredient when you're making pasta. It adds starch. It adds a little salt. And we just go right in the pan here. Coat it. Right. And then how do you know when it's ready? Well, you're going to marry them together. Okay. So you're going to just toss, 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 mm, toss, mm. toss, until those gnocchi kind of absorb into into the uh, sauce, and the sauce absorbs into the gnocchi, Look and they become flip. one. I was just going to say, mine would be all over the I'm floor. I'm just mesmerized so, right I now. mean, you should try it at home. We, yeah. You know, when we teach young cooks, we tell them to take beans home and, <laughs> and just flip beans okay. forever and ever. Oh. Um, and then we just go right here. Serve it up. Um, Look at that final plate. Oh my gosh. I just want a fork right um, now. Mm. And these these gnocchi, you know, in the in the book we have um tons of recipes for different red sauces. The, that's like one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Missy is just red sauce gnocchi. Missy, um, that is a that's a parm. ten plus. Look at that. Yeah. A little more parm. Mm. We thank you so much. Um and we're so excited thank again you. you're joining us from your Brooklyn kitchen, but you've got you're the owner of Lilia and Missy, the Missy. restaurants. In New York. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Us too. For this recipe, go to today.com slash food. And for Missy's book, you can head to today.com slash shop. It's Thank called Pasta. Thank you so much. Welcome to The Boost. I'm Chanel Jones filling in for Hoda today. March is Women's History Month, and today we are all about girl power and inspirational stories of female entrepreneurs. But to start, one woman's hobby, helping reunite people with cherished family heirlooms. See how she's working to make sure no photo gets left behind. Special education teacher Kate Kelly Moonlights as a detective. These are the ones, the unsolved mysteries. Unsolved mysteries, yes. Solving cases rarely as black and white as they appear. I would say this was mm, 1880s maybe, if I were to just roughly guess. Kelly's sleuthing starts with a vintage photo rescued from an antique shop. Ooh, this one's cool, look at this. Horse. Oh yeah, look at that. 50% off. <laughs> Just a small inscription gives her investigation a lead. <gasps> Look at this one. That's a good one. That's fantastic. Keeper pile. And when a case is closed, a once orphaned image returns to a loving home. Would you say this process is addictive? Absolutely. It's 100% addictive. The passion project started about a year ago, but Kelly's love of genealogy has been alive since her childhood, well before the advent of websites like Ancestry.com that now help her identify anonymous faces from times long ago. I can't let them live in a dusty box in an antique store, so they come home with me and I do my best to connect them with relatives. By day in Plainville, Massachusetts, she's teaching. But for several hours a night, Kelly is learning the story behind each photo to find a living connection. It was my dad's senior picture with his identical twin. When Kate Griffin heard from Kelly about this photo in February, 
It had been just three weeks since her beloved father had passed away. I told her I was, my eyes were filled with tears and joy and she has had no idea how much that meant to me because I'd never, never seen that before. Anecdotes like this one earned Kelly a title, the photo angel. She shares her search stories on Facebook, collecting more than 9,000 followers. By her count, Kelly has mailed the unkept keepsakes to 42 states and five countries. This picture of young Ethel Weiss now heading home. She's buried in Arlington, Virginia, but her picture will soon be in the care of her 93-year-old husband. And this of Simeon Staples, headed to family in Rhode Island, a shovel shop worker in the late 1800s. Kelly pays out of pocket for the photos and the postage. She says her payment comes another way. It's just, it's an overwhelming feeling of joy and it's what keeps me going. The labor of love has to express yes. the, a message here and your message would be? My message would be preserve the past. Um, just you don't know who you are until you know who you, your ancestors are. And sometimes when it seems the past is lost, it may just be taking a long way home. Katie Beck, Attleboro, Massachusetts. From preserving the past to working towards the future, next up four women who were brought together by divorce and now have an entirely new kind of family. See why they are encouraging everyone to burn the rule book of life. At any given moment, I have people I can talk to, laugh with. We do a lot of laughing. Karen Hopper, Leandra Nicola, Holly Harper, and Jen Jacobs all say they found their dream home here in Tacoma Park, Maryland. But for them, it's not just about location. It's about living together, kids and all. They go out and practice their flips on the trampoline, and it's just the most fun. The idea for this full house came from Holly and Heron, close friends who went through divorces at the same time. Holly and I really just said, why not? We yeah. were in individual apartments. We were kind of tired of paying rent and yeah. dealing with the logistics of being single parents. My marriage ended and then I had a like, couple of really significant losses. And then in early 2020, my dad died. Just like my life was burned to the ground. Yeah. And so, I could turn to Heron and say, "We, ha I have, I literally have nothing left. Let's just yeah. do this." They started searching, finding the perfect house on day one, and closing in June of 2020. They just needed more people to share it with. I posted in the neighborhood listserv, "Hey, two single moms bought this house. You know, we have a basement unit for rent." Leandra messaged right away and said, "I want in." Leandra, tell me about that decision. Then part of just trying to fi find a way to like have a stable place to live as a single mom, and then had all the perks of like this amazing built-in support system. <laughs> then Holly and Heron's friend, Jen, also moved in. The pandemic had been, what, six months into it, and I was just not feeling in a good place and just feeling really cut off. And then finally, in October of 2020, that was my decision, like, I, I gotta get out. So how is the place set up? Do you each have your own? kitchen and bathrooms. It's a four unit building. Um, so there's a front door and from there you access directly sort of Holly's unit, upstairs is mine, and then on top of mine is Jen's. And then you can go to the basement and access Leandra's. The four split the cost of household expenses and hold monthly meetings to talk business or about any conflicts, which they say are rare. This is probably a loaded question, but for, for those of us who are married, we're like, Oh, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll joke with my husband that I need a wife. Like, you know, yeah, I need somebody well, to like help me. do? Like, I just need, Come you know, on. <laughs> the simplest example is every Monday night is garbage night. <laughs> and only probably once a month yeah. do I do it. Because someone else has done yeah. it. And it's like, oh my God, I live with women. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say it takes a village. And you guys actually have created your own village, right? I hang out with their children and they'll hang out with mine. I can just say, hey, I'm gonna go for a run. And there's always a grown up mm -hmm. on yes. site. They've even given their home a name, Siren House, after the mythical female creature. Siren is a form of sort of feminist power. We're building a community that we sort of have the siren song, so we bring people together. Case in point, Leandra and Jen. They fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> 
and now they're together. <laughs> it's true. Wait, is this for real? Like, seriously? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, one night they, I was no, hanging out. No, 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 I was just saying one night. Can I go on the record and please have the movie rights to this true bunch? <laughs> Not only that, the women also helped Leandra open a cafe nearby called Main Street Pearl. To be in a place where you can like really trust the people around you who are gonna always have you, it's like that's, I mean, that is something that I didn't know I could ever have, so. Is there anything you want people to know about what you've learned from this experience? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Burn the rule book of life and just look at it differently. I love that you guys are living fearlessly. I think that the big takeaway for me is that there is sort of unconditional love. I could be my worst self, I could be my best self. They see me for who I am and it's all okay. Coming up, one woman's journey proving the grass may actually be greener on the other side when you pursue your passion. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Boost. We are bringing you the story of one woman who broke the mold and the bank to pursue her passion for fashion. And wait until you see how it all paid off. Welcome to Shopo, a fashion brand that prides itself on being playful and professional, just like the company culture. Shopo is an online fashion brand that we set out to be your go-to place to shop. We're all about inclusivity, body positivity, and just a lot of great fashion. The business is the brainchild of 35-year-old Jane Liu. Jane, along with her parents, Queenie and Frank, immigrated from China to Australia when Jane was just eight years old. We were poor, they worked in factories, they worked as cleaners, leaving behind their corporate jobs so that they can give me this brighter future. After college, Jane worked at some well-known accounting firms. And while it made her parents proud, Jane absolutely hated it. I remember back then looking at my job and just thinking, I can't do another 40 years of this. So in 2010, she took a risk and joined a friend selling clothing at different pop-up stores. She liked it so much that she quit her corporate job, but kept it hidden from her parents, even though she lived with them. For six months, um, getting up early in the morning, putting on my suit every day, packing an empty laptop bag so I didn't have to actually carry a laptop. And I had to get the bus into the city with my mom because she also worked in the city. That was the start of the business. Yet that business was over almost as quickly as it began. I was devastated, I was embarrassed, and now I was broke. One month later, Jane maxed out her credit cards to create a second business called Showpony, which would eventually become Showpo. We even had three bricks and mortar stores. And I remember the moment that we decided we're going to close all the stores and focus on online. That decision paid off, and so did her decision to advertise the brand on social media in 2011 at a time when few other retailers were doing the same. I couldn't afford traditional marketing methods. I'm just this, you know, girl just posting away on my social media, posting on Facebook before the days of Instagram, before the days of influencers. 
Um, and that's what helped grow the business. Was there a goal that you sort of set out to achieve that you thought to yourself, okay, once I get to this, then I've made it. I wanted to make um, more than my salary, which is I think $60,000 at the time. And then I would be able to just comfortably say to my parents, like, at least I'm doing what I love now. Shopo is on track to make $70 million in sales this year, and they ship their designs to over 100 different countries. Plus, her mom, Queenie, is a fan of the brand. My friend always, oh, Queenie, oh, you, you wear so beautiful. From your daughter? From your daughter? Yes, from my daughter's county. What is your biggest takeaway from everything you've experienced in what it means to become a successful entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur, you, you just gotta take some risks, you're gonna fail, but if you make a mistake now, you're actually saving yourself from a much bigger mistake later. And honestly, as human beings, we're all stubborn. Someone can't tell you something, you need to have made those mistakes. So it's just part of the journey. Stick around for more female entrepreneurs who have found child's play can be the key to maintaining your own mental health after the break. Welcome back, and it's slime time. I joined two female founders who have created a place where kids and adults can let loose. And it's about much more than just having fun. Take a look. I'm doing a job that every day I wake up and I feel good about doing it. One look inside this interactive experience and you're transported to a world full of color, joy, and slime. How did you get the name? Slumo Institute is the slime name for slime. It's from a trend in the internet in 2017 where people were changing the vowels of their name to double O. So Sarah would become Suru, slime becomes Slumo. And Chanel became Shunulu. I brought my daughter and her friends along to spend a day at the Slumu Institute, a place where visitors can experience slime in all its forms. And go! It's almost like once you put on your name tag with your slime name, it almost gives you permission to just kind of lean in. Lean in and let something go. This one's great. But for founders Sarah Schiller and Karen Rabinovitz, this goopy mecca is not just for kids. Both women found comfort in slime during difficult times. Tell me the idea behind this place. Five years ago, just everything in my life fell apart. And one day, a friend of mine happened to visit 
She was there with her daughter. Her daughter had a bunch of slime in her bag. And then I didn't even realize it, but four hours went by. This was my first period of time of four hours that I didn't cry, that I didn't feel grief, that I didn't feel depressed. And I felt like a version of myself at seven. You have a huge smile. So Karen introduced Sarah to slime. And every weekend, the two would spend hours playing with Sarah's daughters. I have a 14 year old daughter who has special needs. She has a rare genetic syndrome called Angelman syndrome. And my husband had a stroke five years ago and he is severely disabled. So I live in a world with a lot of people who either can't speak or can't do a lot of the things that we all can do and, and take for granted. <laughs> After experiencing the joy of slime, Sarah and Karen launched Slumu, making it a point to create an inclusive workplace by hiring neurodiverse staff. That's people diagnosed with conditions like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, and other disorders. So right now I am packing care kits. Folks like Gideon Pianco, one of SLUMU's star employees. Does it feel good to know that they trust you and they like you and they depend on you and they just think you're perfect for this job? It's always really great to have people who like me and care about me and want to give me a job that they don't give anybody else or so, that they trust me more. It's pretty special. Yeah. I am the only one we trust with the cash to go to the bank. <laughs> We had someone stop us who was working in the space the other day and say, I want to thank you for creating such an amazing work environment. How does that feel? It's, it's just so rewarding. As guests continue to discover their slimy paradise, wow, nice. Karen and Sarah oh, had their sights oh set on God. opening new locations in Chicago and Atlanta later this year. Did you ever imagine when you were at that low that you would be in a place talking to me, seeing my little nine-year-old and her friends happy. I never would have. And I think that's why this place means so much to me, because it gave me a life back. And I feel like this is all sort of, in a way, part of a rebirth. Let's turn to another female entrepreneur. This one went from barely being able to afford groceries to running a thriving hair care business that helps women look as confident as they feel. Donna Farazan has that story. Hair is such a big part of our confidence, especially as women, you know? When we look at ourselves in the mirror, the first two things we see are our face and our hair. And if we have a bad hair day, it does not matter what the rest of your day goes like. And for me, it was constant bad hair days. What was your relationship like with your hair growing up? I hated my hair my entire life. My hair never did what I wanted it to do. It was either too straight because I was relaxing it with a chemical relaxer and it didn't hold a curl. It was really like stringy and just like limp. There was no in between. Growing up, Gwen Jameer didn't see her inner light reflected in the outside world. When I was a little girl, there was one standard of beauty and it did not include me. And to see that on TV and then to see me in the mirror look completely different than what I was seeing, it was just a constant low self-esteem recipe. Becoming a mother was the push she needed to turn her frustration into action. I was actually pregnant with my son. He's now 11. I decided that I was no longer going to relax my hair for the nine months that I was pregnant. And I said, okay, I'm going to have to find products that are natural and safe because I want to make sure my baby's natural and safe and healthy. It led me down a rabbit hole to discover an ingredient called Rasul clay, which only comes from the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. And Donna, I'm telling you, for the first time ever, I had this euphoric experience with my hair. It was like, ah. 18 months after her euphoric discovery, her world changed. She was laid off from her job and found herself in the middle of a divorce. A single mother, out the blue, with $32 to my name. Here I am, how am I gonna pay my bills? The only thing I can think of is to work to monetize more this hobby I've created that I love so much. And so Natural Licious was born. Natural plant-based hair products created for women with curly, wavy, and textured hair types. It was something that brought me so much joy. Not only was I providing products that I literally saw change the entire trajectory of how women felt about themselves when they looked in the mirror, but I was also educating them because that's the one piece that's been missing for so long. Gwen soon cemented her place in history as the first African-American woman 
to hold a patent for a natural hair product. Essentially, I went back to college, but it was a self-imposed college. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I was at the library or the USPTO satellite office learning about patent law. I'm excited to be the first, but I'm even more excited to not be the only. And that's what really, really gets me going. Since launching in 2013, Gwen says revenue for the business she started in her kitchen has reached $5 million annually via sales at more than 1,200 stores across the country and online. You've created this sisterhood and this community of people who are going to House of Gwen and, and they're graduating and they're coming out of it and they're feeling like the best version of themselves. How does that make you feel? I just want women to feel good, look good, so they know that they can take on the world. And talk about inspiring confidence. This next woman brings her own daily boost to her hundreds of thousands of followers using social media to motivate others to love their bodies and themselves. I'm wishing fewer healthy, genuine relationships and love on you. Bring your head here. Yeah. Social media powerhouse Achiang Agutu has gained a large following thanks to her infectiously unapologetic videos encouraging viewers to live their best lives. I have decided that I'm no longer going to shrink myself for the comfort of other people. <laughs> it's been a journey. I didn't start feeling like this until probably like five years ago. I was born and raised in Kisumu, Kenya. My parents really did their best to make sure that they instilled in me my worth. I moved to the United States in 2013 to Indiana, which was very different and a huge culture shock for me. I didn't find anyone who had, you know, the same life experiences as me or who talked like me and that transition was really difficult. My full name is Annie Achieng Agutu, and I went by Annie for the longest time because I always wanted to just be so palatable for the world. And there was one summer I decided like, no, I'm gonna go by a name that feels true to me, Achieng Agutu, say it right. This is a regular body, baby. I started talking about my journey of self-love and body positivity. And I started getting such great feedback from people saying, I really needed that today, thank you. Four or five years ago, I was that person who like needed that message. I had to be my own cheerleader. It always comes from a place of what I need to hear. Oh my God, nobody is going to hold me back. I will wear the outfits I want to wear. This jiggle will be jiggling all summer. My sense of fashion comes from my parents, especially my father, who dresses to the tees. My dad always said, you always have to dress your best. That's your own self-expression. And I really wanted that to shine through my videos. And the fashion world has taken notice from her profile in Vogue to invites to events around the Met Gala and New York Fashion Week. The fact that I am in the spaces with people that I look up to, representing a plethora of other women who look like me, I just feel happy and excited to be doing what I'm doing and to have a community that is so supportive and fabulous. No, you're fabulous. <laughs> you are fabulous. <laughs> This Thank is, you. First of all, looking at you as a little girl yes. in Kenya and looking at you today, this confidence. You said one day you decided that you were going to go by the name that suited you. What happened in that moment that made you that made the lights go on and say, now things are going to change? I was just so tired of living for other people. Yeah. I was just doing everybody, everything to like impress people around me and not living for myself. Yeah. And so it was that switch where I was like, I need to start doing things for me, for, for Chiang Agutu, right? Yes. You know, I have to live my life for me. I have to love me. I have to be me unapologetically. Yeah. And you know, this is what I am today. And I'm so glad. <laughs> I mean, you, your confidence, yeah. like, radiates. Yeah. I can almost feel it. Thank you. But you know what else you do? Like, it's not enough for you just to feel good yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to lift up others. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people have really fallen in love mm -hmm. with you. Why, why is that so important to you? Um, it's because I had a time in my life where I didn't have that, right? There was nobody really around me who was saying, you're amazing, you're that girl, you're iconic, you're legendary, you're the moment. Mm -hmm. I did not have that support, and I knew what it felt like to be down in those depths. Mm -hmm. And I've always been looking for my purpose. You know, my parents have always been like, you find your purpose and what makes you happy. It really brings me joy to, you know, hype up somebody and, and to bring joy to somebody's, you know, life or day. You have so many followers. What, tell us what they mean to you. 
they mean the world to me. I think they've been able to bring me to where I'm at today. It just feels like I'm having a Beyonce moment every time I, I you know, I, I, I see my, my followers when I meet them in person. It's, you know, having this army of, army of people behind you really just cheering you on and supporting you and helping you get to where you want to be. I don't know about you, but I can definitely use that kind of positivity in my feed. After the break, we are keeping it coming with our daily morning boost. Stick around. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more feel-good video for you today. Check it out. A yeah. woman named Annie was turning 30, so her friends surprised her with a big birthday weekend. And at some point, they made Annie put on a T-shirt that had an old-school picture of her on it. And here's what happened next. All 15 of Annie's friends dressed up <laughs> oh. to look like her in that childhood oh, wow. photo. They oh nailed gosh. it. Same hair, same shirt, course, timeless fashion. It is. <laughs> And the good news, no one got a bigger kick out of it than Annie herself. That's a fun group of friends. Which one's Annie? <laughs> That's not easy to do either. It's like the real Slim Shady. What a great way to end our show today. We'll be back with you tomorrow, bringing you more of our favorite feel-good stories. See you next time here on Today All Day. Hey folks, welcome back to another edition of Popstar Plus. It is Friday, the weekend's just about here, and if you're gearing up for a few days of binging the latest and greatest shows, we are here to help you with our weekend watch list. We've got interviews with stars of the new series, Daisy Jones and the Six, plus next in fashion, the designer competition show is back for a second season, and one of our personal favorites this time of the year, The Voice is back on NBC with Blake Shelton's final season. All that is coming up, but first we're gonna kick things off with the aforementioned Daisy Jones and the Six. A lot of buzz on this one based on the best-selling book. It tells the story of a popular rock band that suddenly splits at the height of their success. It's a documentary style adaptation revealing each character's take on the reason behind the breakup. Suki Waterhouse, who plays a keyboardist, and Will Harrison, who plays the band's lead guitarist, joined our third hour to tell us exactly what to expect. Are you embarrassed to be with me? What? No. I don't really know what else I'm supposed to think at this point, Kara. It's not that. It's... Look, the moment they know we're together, everything changes. Yeah, it doesn't have to, Yeah, Karen. but it will. They'll treat me different. You know they will. And that's just the boys. I mean, what about the rest of the world? Yeah. <laughs> she was sleeping with the guitarist, so they let her in the band. I mean, that's what people would think, Graham. Well, Suki and Will join us now. Good morning, Hi. guys. Hi. Good morning. So, 
everybody's talking about this series. There is so much buzz about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you feel the pressure about this? I mean, because everybody wants to see this thing. <laughs> we're terrified. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're so excited, yeah, aren't so we? Excited. I mean, we got cast in the show three years ago, I think. It's been well, a long, been a long so time. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. Yes. I mean, it gave us more time to practice our instruments yep. and really gel as a band. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a long time in the making. So we're we're I think we're ready. At I this love point. it. So you guys didn't play instruments before this? He was very good. I played guitar before this. Okay. Certainly not as well as I as I can now. Thanks yeah. to the show. Yeah. It was an added bonus mm -hmm. in getting this job, for sure. Well, the moment is yeah. here now. Yep. Well, I think it was so interesting. We were just talking. This was your first big audition after drama school. And then Riley Keough, who plays Daisy Jones, did she kind of have a hand in helping you nab the role? Is that true? I, that's the story that I had heard. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I, had, uh, I had auditioned for a few of the roles, as I think a lot of the cast had. And I was auditioning for Eddie at that point, And I had done a Zoom call back <laughs> i guess riley had been in the room that's awesome and when we finished they were like what do you think and i think she said well he's not eddie he's he's graham oh, and so then we had to go back in and and audition and for grandma well it all worked yeah. out yeah. Nice. It, it all worked yes, out uh, yeah suki and i can't imagine the audition process obviously i've never auditioned for anything but when you have to do a chemistry read <laughs> mm. had you met will before to do this read i mean how do you know you just all of a sudden have chemistry <laughs> well um yeah i i know i'd never met will before and and i'd also done a bunch of auditions some of which were piano auditions which mm -hmm. was very difficult, uh, you know, just, just picking it up and probably very hard on the ears at that point. <laughs> um, but when I met Will, um, I, I just asked you to pick me up on your back and piggyback me down the hallways yeah, yeah. of, really? of Hello Sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just to have something that we could be like laughing before? about. Uh -huh. Yes, as we, yeah. we, we went outside and, and I said, can we burst into the room? Just piggyback me up and down. And then That's did you, awesome. you piggyback me into the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so to start like, oh, the scene, friends. just yeah. ran in yeah. on my back. Yeah. Wow. It was great. That's yeah. a great idea. It was a no-brainer yeah. for me after yeah. that. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Then you helped me get the role of Karen yeah, from like, that. What are you doing? The piggyback girl. That's, That's, awesome. piggyback girl. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, so you, you, uh, Suki, you released a, a solo album last year, uh, but before filming even started, you guys had to perform a live concert as Ooh. the six. Does, did that give you a sense of what it's like to be a, a rock band and, 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 and everything that goes into that energy that you have to give and get back from the audience? I mean, in certainly in a very small way, it mm, did. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely gave us a taste of it. It was it really gave, fun. It gave us like the backstage anxiety, sort of yep, like, un yep, understanding what that was like. And they had us yep. in. They had us in all of our costumes as well. Oh, that's and fun. we had to we had to perform to basically our bosses. Uh, a lot of them. There are a <laughs> yep. lot of them at Amazon, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yes, <many laughs> it was bosses. a sold out show. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Wow. Well, guys, this is we cannot wait to see this. Uh, thanks so much. First three episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six premiere on Prime Video this Friday. So good. So thank you guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys. I can tell you as a music lover, that show is awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Sounds exciting. And you might also, by the way, recognize Suki's co-star Sam Claflin from The Hunger Games. But in Daisy Jones and the Six, Sam plays the band's lead singer and songwriter. And he told us what it was like learning to sing just for that role. No stranger to starring in adaptations of wildly popular books. Sam Claflin, he played fan favorite Finnick in the Hunger Games franchise. Well, now Sam is, is taking on a more musical role as lead singer Billy Dunn in Daisy Jones and the Six. When Riley Keough's Daisy joins the band, Billy finds himself on the receiving end of some tough questions. What do you think the song's about? What do I think the song is about? What the song yeah, that what I wrote? Song what about? do I think the song that I wrote is about? It's about starting a new life, okay. Daisy. It's about redemption. Redemption from, from what? From uh, letting people down. So guilt. It's about guilt. Oh, Sam, good morning. Good morning. The series looks absolutely fantastic, by the way. Oh, thank you. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. You. So I was a bit surprised to read that your audition for this role did not go perhaps as, as well as you had hoped. Is that true? I, that, that, is, that is correct. <laughs> what, what, hap it's, it's, what happened? It's, it's as bad as you can imagine an audition to go, really. Um, I think I, I was asked to uh, prepare a 1970s rock song, but my knowledge of that particular era of music, or in fact any music, uh, is was kind of non-existent. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went through a playlist or a compilation um, 
that, that was sort of on Apple Music, found a song that I thought fit in my range. Yeah. Uh, went for Elton John's Your Song, which I thought was very rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, they asked you to sing a Beatles song, right? Uh, well, yeah, so basically the, the, the Your Song wasn't quite what they were looking for. Um, so they, they came in with a guitar and said, do you know this song? I was like, come together. I said, yes, Michael Jackson. Oh. Sang, sang. Oh. Uh, you know, so that, that, was, that, was, that was where I was starting this, this uh, journey. Um, but I've 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 learned I've learned something now. I feel, I I feel like so. I've been on a roller coaster. <laughs> and, and here's the thing for folks who who don't know. I mean, you you didn't grow up singing. You actually learned to sing for this role. Yeah, I I done I done a few musical theatre um, shows growing growing up. Um, I was in like Jesus Christ Superstar, Les Miserables, but like a high school kind of standard level. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. This this was my the first time I'd ever been in a recording studio. The first time I'd ever sung, you know, rock rock music. If that makes. I, I want to play just a clip here of of you uh, and your co-star singing together because I think it's pretty fascinating when you consider where you were versus where you ended up. And I think we have that have that clip. This is the two of you. I mean, I, I, I'd say you picked it up pretty well. How long did it take for, for you to get to that point? Well, we had originally, I think we had about a month or four, four weeks, I think, to prepare. Get you know all the all the songs recorded to learn the songs to learn guitar, um, but then because of the pandemic, we were blessed with another year and a half of yeah. delays, which meant you know we could all grow our own hair and um, and yeah, basically familiarize familiarize ourselves not only with the music but with each other. I think in a way that um, you know benefited the the overall the end product. And you play opposite Riley Keough, of course, Elvis's his, his granddaughter. Yeah. Um, did that ever did that ever come up during during the shooting? She she definitely doesn't carry the weight of her, you know, uh, the, the, the her ancestors uh, on her shoulders. Like you you wouldn't know to meet her in person. I don't think she's just a very grounding, very um, free spirited, just kind, generous person. Um, but yeah, there, there was a day where we were on set in a cafe. It was a cafe sequence, quite kind of late on in the filming process and me and her were sat there quietly in between takes and all of a sudden I started hearing an Elvis song over over the over the sort of speakers yeah. it was like there was a moment where you know you just look at someone and go oh my gosh that's your granddad that is your granddad my granddad is a children's entertainer dresses up as a clown <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, this is, this, yeah, it was kind of wild to, to be reminded, I think. Well, Sam, thank you. Can't wait for it. Daisy Jones and the Six is out on Amazon Prime Video today. So be sure to add that one to your weekend watch list. Coming up next, stars from another show you're going to want to binge, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Do you love good old-fashioned competition shows? Who doesn't? 
Well, next in fashion should be right up your alley, or should I say down your runway. This season's hosts, Tan France and Gigi Hadid, judge a group of 12 up-and-coming designers on their skills and creativity. At the end of it, one will be the winner of the $200,000 prize and get to showcase their fashions. Gigi and Tan gave the entire scoop to our fourth hour friends. She is a supermodel who has rocked the runways for nearly a decade. Most recently in Milan for Fashion Week, he is a TV personality and designer who took the fashion world by storm. Absolutely. We are talking about Gigi Hadid and Tan France, and they together... <laughs> Great chemistry. Our co-hosting the next Netflix competition series is called Next in Fashion, where up-and-coming designers compete for a chance to win $200,000. Nice. Yeah, I know. Nice. Big bucks. Big bucks. Oh, okay, yeah. wait. You guys met on FaceTime. I'm trying. Your origin story is very complicated. Yeah, who's going complicated, first? Complicated, but gorgeous. You tell it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I was um, five years ago, like the rest of the world, falling in love with the Queer Eye yes. cast yes. and. Um, I was specifically spending that weekend on my couch. I think I was like going through a breakup, like crying a lot watching Queer Eye, right? Like, it's, it's very As like. Because yeah. it's so uplifting. It is. Yeah. And it just like, yeah. So, anyways, a friend of mine, Eva Chen, who uh, is head of fashion at Instagram, had Tan at the office that day. And I was like, I'm going to need to FaceTime Tan, <laughs> which is not really like me. Like, I'm not. not at all. You're not one to reach out. Yeah, like, no. if we're like in the same room and the universe brings us together and we're supposed to be friends, we'll get there. But I stalked him. <laughs> You're like, so, will you be my friend? So, yeah. she literally invited me to her house within that hour. And that like, moment. Yeah, I was like, do you want to have tea? No yeah. way. <laughs> and I was like, yep, I'll be there in a minute. And so I went over, we chilled for a few hours, and the rest is just... Wait, I love this. And then it turns out you have a lot in common. I read, and I think we can all agree on this one, you love breakfast burritos. We love we a do. breakfast We do. We ate a lot of breakfast burritos on set of... You like a burrito passion. better than a taco? Yeah, we love yes. a breakfast burrito. You like a burrito better than a breakfast taco? Yes. yes. Who has a breakfast I thought you would taco. be in this club. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm from really? Texas. I'm a pro... Well, Breakfast I mean, I'm not taco. against breakfast tacos. <laughs> like, that's a lot. I've never even of a breakfast taco. I've well, I've got to take you to Austin. Oh, my God. Oh. You, you were spending a lot of time in Austin. Austin. I've never heard of a breakfast taco. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I love think, a burrito. Yeah. I love okay. it. some hot we sauce do. on that burrito. I'm right. here for it. But yeah. I, you always would give me like the your hot sauce that you didn't finish, which is so I nice. I think I'm a really good older brother. Yeah, you are. Oh, I love yeah, this. Yeah, I do take care Did of Did y'all ever think you would work together after that chance encounter? Yeah, exactly. I thought we'd be mates. Yeah, I thought we'd always be friends, but like, oh, I, wow. I think that this is a very specific, yeah. great experience for us that yeah. just like, it worked. And yeah. um, But now that she's done this, maybe you'll be the Fab Six. Oh, I would love that. Ooh. She would love I've been asking that. for that, but yeah, they just yeah. said, I like, that. I don't really, I would have to be yeah. your assistant, because, like, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. else? Tan, so yeah. many people feel like they know you. I mean, like, Gigi, yeah. we watch you, and we say, oh, my gosh, we want to yeah. be his friend. Is there anything about you that we don't know or that people may find surprising? Or is it, you know what, this is it? You know, I, I do think that you may disagree. I'm a lot shyer than I seem on TV. I'm nowhere near as confident in real life Aww. as I am on that TV. Makes you I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say shy. I feel that it's more like he, there's like a boundary, which I think that like everyone has. Yeah. And then once he gets like trusting and comfortable, yeah. then he like opens up a lot more. Yeah. But I, it's yeah. like. I'm more guarded. Yeah. I'm very British. I just, I don't let you in. And I don't say I love, you know how Americans will always say yes. on the first day, oh my gosh, I love you so much. I don't love you. Uh, <laughs> I think but then nice. have you said you love you? Yeah. I love you. Oh, you've earned the love. love. No, no, but it takes some time. Like, yeah. you don't love someone on the first day. You like them. Sometimes <laughs> I do. Yeah, no, we, I don't believe sometimes you. Sometimes I do. I, don't I, I throw it. that around. Really? So, yeah. I love the word love. You do. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> I love it because you guys seem genuinely happy about this, right? Like, it's changed you, for like, sure. Yeah, I've and never been happier at work. No, like, we really had a good time. I think, I mean, I am a huge competition show fan, and I've watched them all, and I think you can genuinely tell that we had a really good we time. We loved it. I can't well, that. This show is so exciting, and we're really, really excited. We have some looks. Because we have some looks that y'all have never seen. First okay. of all, were y'all totally blown away by the young talent on this show? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wildly. I mean, I think they all bring such a different um, design perspective, and that's really what we're looking for. Yeah. We're not looking for the next best sewer. We're okay. looking yeah. for the next best creative director and someone that's going to really inspire people's imagination. And next, not just what can you find in a mall, what would you wear yeah. to your office party? Like, we want something that's really inspirational. What you would see in editorials and Yeah, yeah. elevated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm excited about Okay, that. well, I know that y'all are excited because you kind of got a glimpse, but three of the designers from season two are joining us now to showcase their never 
before scene looks. You all have not seen them. We haven't seen them. But we saw them last night at dinner. We all had dinner. Oh, you all have dinner? Let's see the new looks. Okay. So we're excited okay. to get your take. Are we ready? And their thoughts. Yes. All right, so let's bring out DeAndre Hancock. I love that we're doing a critique. And model yeah. Kayla. Yeah, here you are. Yeah. Okay. DeAndre, yeah. tell us about this look. Wow, so this that's look cool. is inspired by just my personality. I love to stand outside the box. Where are you from, DeAndre? I'm from Washington, D.C. Okay, cool. Nation's capital. Okay. DeAndre's looking hot. <laughs> look at DeAndre. Can you also design your outfit? Yes. Wow. Just this morning in the hotel, I was no like way. whipping it up. Wait, what? You'll see it on the show. We pull yeah. things off really fast. In a few hours, they can do yeah, they can some do things that would blow your mind. I can so see this on the runway. I yeah, mean, so yeah, tell please. us about this look. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, this look, like I said, is inspired by me just loving to stand outside the box. I love to be eye-catching when I'm out. So I just thought that I would just, you know, make something that just catches everyone's okay. eye. Are we going to give a live critique? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, so here's how I here's how I feel about it, Gigi. Okay, go. What I think is, no, I love that you've given us your signature puffer. I love the contrast of leathers. I love that you've tied in the sparkle of the puffer on your uh, underlay. I think it's so chic. Gigi, I love what, are it your, too. what are your thoughts? Well, I really, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a time in the show where you nod to these pants, and yeah. I love to the see them. The pants are amazing. I love life. to see them on a girl. This is like a new take on those, and I... I'm obsessed with them. I will be copying. Because, we, <laughs> because most of Yantre's stuff was on men yeah. uh, on the show, so uh, I love that so you put really, it on somebody. We really pushed them. Up. Yeah, if they, if they were originally menswear designers to try and yeah. you know, sh show those um, same shapes on women, because I love to oh wear gosh. menswear. Yantre, is this not a dream to have these two? I mean... It's a dream come true. Like, every day I'm just like... I'm just like starstruck. You know what? Yes. I can but, but also, you are a star. This you is are. Yeah. We know you're a star. How about that? All right. Y'all step over there. We Thank got the you. next. So good. You. The next Love designer, Amari Carter. She oh, no! is my model. Amari. Amari <gasps> oh, serving today. All right, Amari, tell us about this look. So pretty much this was based on a breakup, actually. Wow. So I'm all about the emotional storytelling. So you'll have the bra straps here. And then I'm all about the mystery. It's like my alter ego. What? Hold Amari, on. I Hold love on. This. You finished the look. <laughs> oh, Wait, so you're you finished finish the look. Finish she only had eight hours to <laughs> done. It's amazing. Wait, it's but so this gorgeous. is so detailed. What do you guys think? I mean, Amari is so good at, like you said, that detail. And I yeah. love that she really can make sexy it's pieces so but also put a kind of like a cool touch on top of them so you don't feel yeah. too vulnerable and that's the kind of sexy that I want to wear right. and I think Amari is a genius The in finishes that. of it are so good. So Wait, good. Are the so biker good. shorts back with the, la la the lace on the bottom? Those I used back? to have some of those. Yes, those? Yeah. yeah. The lace on the bottom <laughs> of the biker I mean, shorts. <laughs> if she's wearing them, they're back. If All right. Amari says it, then yes. Yeah, okay. Totally. So that's nice beautiful. to meet you. We Thank have you one more. Amari. Last but not least. Well Thank done, Amari. It was so cute. James Ford, who is rocking his James! James! James, I want to wear that suit. Thank you. Thank Look at you. his smile. I want to. <laughs> yeah, no, James is hot. He's so James cute. Hot. I'm like the old lady. Look at his smile. James is hot. Um, um, tell us about cool. that. Tell us about your suit. Yeah, so um, I'm doing my own stunts today, I guess. Um, <laughs> didn't have a model. Okay. Uh, I do custom suits for the queer community. Okay. Um, so I made this because, you know, I like I, I make a lot of like first suits for people. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is their first suit that's really fit them or they can't find something that's, you know, somewhere between a ball gown and a tuxedo, right? So that's kind of what I do. Um, but this isn't my first suit, right? I'm on like six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> suits. This is perfect. So done. It's it so <laughs> good. I wanted to make something a little more fun and I, I'm like a knit boy. I love knits. I love crochet. These are Where all. Did you um, grow up? Kentucky. Kentucky. Cool. Well, that is right. a beautiful suit. All over the beautiful country. suit. It's so fun, so funky. Those are like those James it. details that we yeah. really love. And I know for a fact James also made that necklace. That's right. Ooh, so, the necklace is necklace. so cool. Yeah, James really takes us to this like really funky slash classic world, and I relate to you. I feel like I could see style. all of these looks at like they the Met Gala. So yeah. proud. Like, so Can you yes, see how they are so talented? Next in Fashion is out today on Netflix. Happy binge watching, everybody. When we come back, I'm going to catch up with my buddies from The Voice on NBC. Don't want to miss that.
Thanks for joining us. It's Pop Star Plus getting you ready for the weekend. So The Voice is back on NBC for season, if you can believe it, number 23. Very excited to host the show once again. Uh, this time around, the OG coach, Mr. Blake Shelton and Kelly Clarkson are being joined by some new uh, rookies, we call them, familiar faces to the music scene, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. I promise you, you're in for an incredible season with this group. And I had the pleasure of chatting with the coaches about everything they're looking forward to in season 23. Blake has been with us from the very beginning of The Voice, going back to 2011. Wow. But yes, yeah, season 23 will be his last, and we're going to keep the fun going with two new coaches as we give Blake one heck of a send-off. Kelly Clarkson and Blake Shelton are the winningest coaches at The Voice. Kelly, a four-time winner, is looking to unseat champion Blake, who's won a record nine times and is going for win number 10. He's got one more shot at it. After 23 seasons on The Voice, Blake has decided the time has finally come for him to leave the show. You've been here since the beginning, we both have. This is what they ask the greats when they leave. Was it when I married you and your wife in your ranch? Was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It was around, I think I was close to calling it a day right when, when COVID hit. And then because of COVID, I didn't want to walk away from the show and, and leave everybody in a bind. I mean, this show changed my life. I'll stay here until the world kind of gets back to normal again. What would it take for you to stay? Was it something I said? <laughs> I'd like for Kelly to, to not be on the <laughs> show anymore. Well, you said, you said that think, about Adam, and then Adam, poof, was yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think there's too much Kelly Clarkson on television in general. <laughs> what has it meant to you to be a part of the Voice family for this whole time? What has it really done for you? Well, I mean, I met my wife on this show. It's changed my life in every way it possibly can from, you know, a personal standpoint. Juan Stefani, Blake Shelton, I'm so excited. I get to go to work with Blake. We're carpooling together. Obviously, from a career standpoint, I've actually read people say, you know, the only star the voice ever found was, was Blake Shelton <laughs> because I was pretty much... I don't know how to take that as yeah. a producer of the show. Is that a, just, is that a compliment? It is what it is, America, <laughs> okay? Okay. I yeah. love you, too. <laughs> it changed the path of my career. But when I came on as coach on this show, I mean, every, everything in my life turned upside down and, and in a good way, you know? This has been incredible, but it's time, you know? It's, it's time for... Not even for what's next, you know, a little bit of nothing would be nice. Are you giving him help? The new season kicks off with the two veteran coaches battling it out with the newcomers, Niall Horan and Chance the Rapper. <laughs> we can make something happen. All trying to lead their teams to victory. What is it like for you to coach and work with just new talent? I love it. I think it's so cool just seeing how excited and poised these people are to like get on stage and show what they've been working at their whole lives. I think America knows about Kelly and Blake, but for the new coaches on The Voice, what are you going to be listening for, Niall? Um, I think for me, I'm just kind of waiting for them voices that kind of make you feel something, a bit of a storyteller kind of vibe going on. <laughs> get a few ghost bumps you and then hit the button. Like Kelly, you were on one of these shows. Now that I'm alone, and cause right now it says that we did that help you? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, um, when it comes to making decisions about who's staying and leaving, that's when it's tough. The first step pleases the father. You got successful without the help of, you know, conventional radio. You're very self-reliant, very independent. And even though my boy is blocked, you got chance right here! <laughs> Those qualities, how do they help you being a coach? When I, you know, see artists out there on the stage, I see a young myself, like, you know, somebody navigating the industry on their own, trying to make a name for themselves. And I just try and like impart on them the wisdom that I've gained over the years being in it. And I heard you not. Kelly, you took a little time off. What did you miss about The Voice? I definitely missed the rehearsals with the team. I like to break down a song and then make it a little different and mm -hmm. make it your own. So that whole process is very fun for me and intriguing. Do you view any of the new coaches as competition? Honestly, I view all of them. Obviously, the Cowboy, I mean, everybody's going to be rooting for him. It's his last season. <laughs> oh, man. What makes Blake such a winning coach? 
A winning coach? Yeah, like why? I mean, he's done it nine times. Yeah. So it, it's more than luck. Honestly, I think because he's it? just so popular in the country. I think once we go live in America, the, the fate of the show's in their hands. Yeah. Oh. They just vote for Blake and oh. whoever he represents because they love him so much. Oh, okay. Um, it so would be one large reason. You don't think he's necessarily got a, more of an ability to actually pick talent? Oh, hell no. <laughs> So much fun. Don't forget to join us for the brand new season. It's Blake's Last, The Voice, Monday night on NBC. Well, we hope you enjoyed our picks of what to watch this weekend, and that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks so much for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. up a fantastic pasta dish with assistant managing editor of the New York Times and founder of New York Times Cooking, Sam Sifton. And he is gearing up for the New York Times Food Festival. Oh. It's coming back October the 8th. I'm so excited. Uh, Sam's going to be moderating a special panel with the cast and crew of the FX hit show, The Bear. Mm. Uh, so we decided to make a spin on a family style meal from the show with Sam's Amatriana. Uh, Amatriana on, on the, the fly, fly, on the fly, which okay. is from the show. But what I love about your column, you talk about this concept, and this is what we're going to do. It's a no recipe recipe. That's right. What do you mean? What I mean by that is you don't have to follow the rules all the time. Uh -huh. You just have to kind of start with a prompt mm. and get going. Okay. And, and, and I provide the prompt. And then you make it however you like it. Mm. But you add lib. You add lib. Okay, so what so are we add lib? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Especially is, if it's bacon. This is bear adjacent. This okay. is not bear cooking. <laughs> okay. I'm not carmy. <laughs> right. This is bear adjacent. So we've got some slab bacon here uh -huh. that I Yum. chopped up for that little tease. And we're going to get it into a pan with some olive oil. And we're just going to let that get going and render some fat. About how much bacon? I like a lot of bacon. I do too. Is that enough? <laughs> yes, a lot of you bacon. Work for is it? Good. So yeah. a lot of bacon mm. going, and we're just going to let that render, render, render. Okay. Mm. And if you don't use bacon, mm. traditionally. Mm. well, traditionally it was made with guanciale, the oh. hog jowl bacon. Right. But I've done it with salami. I've done it with pepperoni. Okay. Any cured meat, right? So we got that going. Next, we're going to get some onions. Okay. That's going to help us with our sauce. What's your tip for cutting onions? I go across. Uh huh. And then down the middle. Okay. Right? And always leave that guy right there, that okay. root end. Yeah. Right? That'll leave hold, him there? That'll hold everything together oh. as you're cutting. Pro tip. Got it? Pro tip. Pro, Pro tip. tip. All right, so into that rendered bacon. Ah, oh, my goodness. Secret ingredient. Fat is flavor, my friend. Yes, oh, my God. It is. So we got that going. And we'll get mm -hmm. that down pretty low. Uh -huh. Let it go until it's pretty caramel. Mm. Okay. Right? 
Now we're going to build the sauce out. Mm. We've got some canned chopped tomatoes, okay. right, which are going to go in there. If, if, you, 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 if you've had some, like, a, a good harvest of garden tomatoes, could you use fresh? You definitely could do that, but I like those garden tomatoes raw, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You want to, like, a bruschetta or yeah. something, okay. Okay. salad. A tomato watermelon salad, that's always delicious. Mm. So this guy goes and goes and goes and goes and builds up flavor. Mm -hmm. We've oh, made some good. pasta. Okay. okay. I've added some butter to that pasta. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Because flavor. Add flavor. I'm like, exactly. that's why this is so good. Right. Because you, you, you gotta pay attention. The, you know, yeah. you really want to get some nice plushness. And it's really like five ingredients too. It's nothing. But it tastes so, it's so layered. And and do you, can you? Is there any pasta you could use? Or yeah, you could use a bucatini if you can find any, uh -huh. or a spaghetti, or you know, you could do this with shells and have a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. So we get that going around, right. okay. and then what we're gonna do when we're done mm -hmm. and we're happy with it is hit it with some pecorino romano, oh, oh, pecorino okay. romano, more flavor, mm -hmm. more Try flavor, this. some red pepper flakes, oh. okay. and some chopped parsley I because. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did Maybe you add the pasta water to that as well? I'll add a little bit of pasta water okay. in there just to loosen things up if it gets tight. That's delicious. Okay. Hey, hey, Sam, talk, talk to us about uh, the festival coming up. Oh, oh yeah. We're really excited. Um, we started the festival a couple of years ago. We missed a year or two mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, and now we're back in Damrush Park in Lincoln Center. We're going to have a That's ton so of great chefs coming in. Mm -hmm. We sold out tickets in the first tranche, but wow. we're putting a new set on on September 22nd for sale. And then for those who can't make it to New York, mm -hmm. we're going out on the road with oh, some good. of our, with oh, Melissa wow. Clark and oh, others, some of our best of our chefs. Faves. And we're going to cook with some of America's greatest chefs on the road. And you That's can cook awesome. at home with cooking kits from the New York Times store. That's awesome. Right. Al right. always good, raves good about recipes. It's the biggest customer. It's, it's, it's the, the thing that I, I go to all the time, right after uh, today food. I <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. The New York Times cooking, we're giving you a run. It is you fantastic. Sam Sifton, always love when you're here. Thanks so, so much. Good. This morning in today's food on a twist, an Italian classic here to make pasta cacio e walnuts. Ooh. Chef and cookbook <laughs> author Carla Lali Music. I wish there were smell o vision I, it's, yeah. It smells yeah. so Amazing. good here. Her new yes. cookbook is called That Sounds So Good and This Sounds So Love Good. Carla, good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, so girl. start us off here because cacio e pepe you've always heard of, but sure. cacio e walnut, what are we talking about? I know, here? and not like cacio e pepe needed improvement <laughs> as a classic, <laughs> but a couple of things that can go wrong for people. One is is that the cheese doesn't melt yeah. because it's those hard grating cheeses. So mm -hmm. I changed up the cheese. And for me, like, it's great, all those textures. It's like adult mac and cheese, mm -hmm. but I need a little crunch. Okay. Yeah. So we've got pasta boiling. That's going to come in. Just keep an eye on that. Okay. And I just like to crush the garlic. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind of pasta, by the way. I like a big tube for this, okay. and but you can really use anything. Like um, spaghetti would be fine, but I like with a big tube. Some of these pieces will get inside oh, the tube. Get, and they get the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and then you get like a little secret. Um, Wait, you didn't so crush them as much. Okay. No. So these are just going to toast, kind of like that, and I'll press down on them while they're going or maybe mm -hmm. one of you will press down okay. while they're going and then instead of toasting the walnuts in the oven I 
toast them in the pan with the oil and the garlic. Oh, so they kind of yeah. pick up all those flavors mm -hmm. and infuse. And that really gives a crunch. Um, so another thing that's classic with cacio e pepe is that you would use a sheep's milk cheese, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, pecorino or pecorino and parm. Mm -hmm. But what can happen is those cheeses, like, they like to clump up yes, when they're melting. it's melted. so frustrating. Yeah. So I, I have a fettuccine Alfredo it. recipe that is great, but it's very similar. The cheese clumps up on people. Mm -hmm. So for this, that was really in my mind, and I wanted to solve for it. So instead of using pecorino, I switched it to manchego. Oh, we oh. went to Spain. Oh. We went okay. to Spain. Oh, so a little okay. bit with the walnuts mm -hmm. and the manchego goes like, yeah, now we're on a, like a European siesta. Uh -huh. We're just idea. going across. Could yeah. you use another nut tough. other than walnut? Totally. So yeah. my book has spinets for every single recipe. So <laughs> you could use pecans, you could use almonds, you could mm -hmm. use cashews, you could really okay. use whatever you want as long as it's got crunched, even pistachios. So importantly here, why don't you grate okay. uh, or crack a lot of pepper in there right. because the pepe is the pepper. Uh -huh. And without yeah. that, like it's not cacio e pepe, it's Perfect. not cacio e walnut. Mm -hmm. And more? also putting, yeah, more. Oh, the okay. Putting yeah. the pepper Did I hear in what kind of oil you said yeah. you use? Extra virgin olive oil. Virgin yeah. Olive. yeah. And, and why is the pasta water so important? So pasta water is really important because the oil and the pasta themselves with the cheese, things will melt, but they're never going to get creamy. So you really need that water. So let's see. How is our pasta? Let's it's give not it, quite done yet. Not but quite done. I don't know if we have time to We're wait for it to finish. Drop one in here. Let's see. All right. So with the pasta water, the kind of brilliant thing that happens is it creates this like available liquid for the cheese to melt into oh. so fat like any emulsion fat and water like they need mm -hmm. they need both to be there in order to make something creamy how much water by the way mm. 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 Like pretty good, good? Like, yeah right, if cool. you want to do that Calvin's my noodle tester at home <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> that's kind of scooby noodle yeah, yeah mm. totally um, I mean I feel like the water part is all a feel it is yeah I don't know I'm sorry I usually more. scoop out and using the um the measuring cup, You're you right. can take out a cup or a cup and a half, yeah. but something nice about using a strainer is that you don't dump the water first. So yeah, you right. kinda, if you need to go back, you can. But hot tip, if you forget about the pasta water yeah. and you use tap, oh, it's go. totally okay. fine. Okay, okay. Right. okay. oh, much. yeah. Um, put a cup in there. Let's dump the Put's pasta the right in here. Okay. I like to build the whole sauce in something deep like this. Yeah, Ooh, beautiful. Good. And Amazing. And the cheese, is that okay? And then we're going, yeah, because okay. they're all going to end up in the same mm -hmm. place. So using something deep like this mm -hmm. gives oh, you room yeah. to stir oh. and toss and right. go and without. Then you're end up with something this like this. Exactly. Yeah. So come that melts side. gradually. Wow. You end up there over you here. You guys definitely need to get in there. It's a pleasure. Dylan loves this. This is her favorite. This is my favorite. I mean, I want to plan a trip to Italy just to eat cacio e pepe. And, and really it should look really creamy and saucy. So a with nice something salad. rich and cheesy like this, I love a simple uh -huh. salad. Oh my this goodness. is my big batch vinaigrette. It's the vinaigrette I grew up eating. We always had a bottle of it on the counter. Really simple. Mustard, olive oil, a couple kinds of vinegar. My mom always put balsamic and oh shallot. God. Put it in the blender or the Cuisinart. Mm -hmm. You end up with this beautiful oh, concoction. Go ahead and swirl. And it's creamy. You can keep it in the you fridge. Make it look so easy. And then it's not a big deal to make a salad because your dressing is already mm. done. How long until this lasts in the fridge? The Many ma weeks in the fridge. Weeks? For right. sure, yeah. 100%. I would yeah. say, I'm oh, a fan of cacio e yeah. pepe. This has definitely taken it up a notch. Amazing. Um, Thanks, yeah, it's Carla. that little bit of crunch. And, and the salt. crunch and the toastiness in the walnuts. Yeah. It's yeah. Like what it needed. Good. Plus yeah. gar garlic. We garlic. What kind of wine garlic. Garlic. would you recommend with this? Because like, I Actually, something white and bright, like a Friuli or something like that. Carla, thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to check out her new cookbook. That sounds so good. Good. Trust me, it is. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. Joining us with budget-friendly meals that you can make for dinner tonight is an expert chef, Frankie Salenza. He's the host of the Taste Maid's hit series, Struggle Meals, where he creates gourmet dishes that will not break the bank. Frankie, you're just what the doctor ordered today. We need you. What are you going to make hey, for Hey, I got us? all five of you. Good morning. Good morning, Hi. Frankie. Super cool. <laughs> what you going to make? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make a mushroom cavatelli pasta. Mm -hmm. So I can show you that real quick. Obviously, pasta is super affordable, but if you just go buy semolina, which is a high gluten flour, um, you can make pasta with just semolina and water. Ooh. Am I allowed to say gluten on air? Is that sure. like yeah, no, you're okay. Good. Good. You can okay. do it. How so you literally just combine those, and then and then you can roll out sort of a snake here. Wow. Cut these up like this. Bing, 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 and then with your with your knife. You can just kind of windshield wiper. You oh, see that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And you get these things called cavatelli. 
because it means little hollows. And if you think of like cavity, for example, oh. the, you know, the Latin root cavity, cavitelli, cavity is a hole in your tooth. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, makes this whole thing budget friendly? So really, there's listen, there's a whole bunch of ways to save money. One of the biggest ones that people overlook because we live in the future and everything is available all the time is cooking in season. If you're cooking in season, it's not being transported long distance to get to you. Like, that's a great point. I don't know. Carson, would you go down to Argentina right now with the price of flights? Yes, I probably would. <laughs> if Jeff Blue went, would? OK, well, if you want your asparagus right now, it's yeah. coming from Argentina and right. you're paying for it to get on a plane. Flight. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right. That's no good. No. So, right. right. Eat, Seasonal eat selections, beets, are for close. example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, a rag here. You just roast the beet mm-hmm. and hopefully this works because I did cook these last night. But essentially, if you just get a rag that you dedicate to this and, and use the friction of the rag, Wait, sort of this is the twist. Here. Yeah, oh. you twist the you twist the beet inside. Oh, is a bird going to come get, out of there? Yeah. You see it like, oh, what? what? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a cool. pro so, so beets are in season. They're a root vegetable. So is citrus. You can make a gorgeous citrus beet salad. Mm. Can I ask a dumb question, Frankie? Is there like a website or a place you could learn where things are in season? Like, I have no idea. Just go to the grocery store. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's this whole like thing that we have in the palm of our hand with all of mankind's knowledge. And you can just say winter vegetables and you'll oh. find that it's <laughs> so root vegetables. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Cruciferous right. vegetables, root it. vegetables, right. citrus. Mushrooms. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be. No, I deserve it. Sure. It was dumb. I told you it was dumb. <laughs> okay. We'll go back. Frank, so, where, where, so where that's the mushroom a, a beet salad. Re- go ahead. Where's the mushroom come in on the pasta? Different dish. So we've got our mushroom here. I cooked them naked in the pan. Mm. Got it. And then I added some fat after. It's mm. sort of counterintuitive. You want to dehydrate a mushroom so that then you can infuse it with fat, which is flavor. Mm. So I cooked it naked in the pan. They shriveled up, water came out, Mm. threw the butter and or olive oil in there. And now we've got, you know, we've got this mushroom. Okay, so there's mushroom. Cavatelli. That's the the mushrooms go into the cavities. And you're saying making your homemade pasta, that was, I mean, that was a good budget move too, right? It's a good budget move. Pasta is pretty affordable anyway, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. So, like, if you want to use a boxed pasta, mm-hmm. the thing is to just pair mm. it with in-season ingredients. I want to eat that. It's not I a problem at all. I hey, Frankie, does, you know, does homemade pasta, does it, does it change the cooking time? Yeah, it's a lot faster. So I put these in right at the start of the segment. They've got a self-timer built in. They float to the top when they're done. Oh. If uh, if you see it, it Frankie, takes like, you know, between Frankie, two and three minutes. You're an oh, A-plus guest. We want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. You're great. You can find uh, rest- this recipe at today.com slash food, and you catch Frankie's show. Check it out. It's called Struggle Meals. It's Thursdays on Tastemade. Thank you, Frankie. Come back in person next time, Frankie. Come yeah. back, Frankie. <laughs>
We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are yeah, we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni. Uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of the one of the most classic Italian American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pig sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce, so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the, with the hot Italian sausage. And then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to, we're going to cover the, uh, the pasta in the sauce. And I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And mm. I love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, put- did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's, actually, hold on, that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked. So maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce. It's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees. And on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, how do you degrees. keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, and the, and, the, and the edges and the crispiness mm-hmm. on around the side. What mm-hmm. do you always want to have part of it? You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for, I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up. And then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to mm-hmm. broil. Mm-hmm. Pour yourself and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your, uh, Take out your, your pasta, and you can see this is what it's going to look like. I see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope that's, that's what I'm that's talking about. Oh. Here. If you're watching this at home, make this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Man, make, Bob, make it about this yeah. weekend. Yum. And then basically, you know, you can just take, like, take a little bit and just kind of, kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? B Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. But I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome you know you know chefs from all over the country to come in and and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You know, they usually have like all these. They have like viewing parties in their in their local community. It's great. B Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last. I don't know. Does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. 
Oh, oh. actually, Carson, you know what? You're, you've actually done your research because Christi- Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So, like, get the sausage out of here. She's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there. As well, <laughs> well he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. Well, I, I, then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened a Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll all right. Well, thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Hey, we can catch thanks, an all buddy. new episode of Beat Bobby Flay tonight on Food Network and get Bobby's recipes on our website today.com slash food. Ooh, the answer's gone when you need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. This is the Al Roker. Yeah. Missy Robbins is a James Beard award-winning chef and owner of Lilia and Missy Restaurants. She's out with her second book called Pasta, the Spirit and Craft of Italy's Greatest Food. Missy's right here near us in Brooklyn, uh-huh. in her kitchen right now. Missy, by the way, you were a home run on the 8 o'clock hour. We're still talking about that breakfast pasta. Oh, we uh-huh. get it. No, we want it. We want you to come make it for us. But for us, you're going to make... I will do that anytime I'm allowed. Yay. I love it. Okay, so you're making a broccoli pesto. This is mm. one of your favorites. Tell us why. Yeah, this one. This one's a little later than the last segment where we did carbonara, and I, I, I bragged about how rich it is. Okay. This one's a little later. Um, there's a few reasons I love this. One, it's it's got broccoli. It's healthy. It's I developed this when when I was trying to eat healthier and wanted to include more vegetables. And okay. how do I do that but still have a little pasta? So it starts with it starts with you can use broccoli. You can use broccoli rabe. In my in my recipe, I have both. Um, you kind of just separate the florets, the mm-hmm. leaves, and then um, blanch it, shock it, chop it. So that's a, a, just a quick cook. Um, and you end up with this. Um, and then the leaves and basil, you also mm. blanch and do a puree. Okay. Um, and then we use pecorino. Mm. We use parmigiano. So it's still so got the yummy the stuff in there. all the kind of traditional, yeah, yeah, all the yummy stuff. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not like... You Can know, I ask diet. real quick about it's, that pesto? You was that a pesto you poured in? Is that what the basil was? That that was that was just a puree. Puree. Um, okay. And then this is olive oil, which will mm. kind of bind it all together. Mm. And then the gnocchi, one of the reasons I love them, I think, I think, a, you can make them ahead of time. You can you can make them, you can cook them ahead of time and hold them overnight. This is a ricotta gnocchi Ooh. that's uh, really foolproof. Yeah. Like you, you cannot screw this up. So and, should you just and, not buy the, uh, you know, the frozen like a, ones and 
Do I need you to do the real never thing? Buy, you should never buy. Is that never, horrible ever. of me? Okay, oh, I'm never. sorry. I won't buy the frozen ones anymore. <laughs> This is just so easy, and I, I love it also because it's great to make with kits. Mm. Really great to make with kits. It's an easy one. Um, I roll this dough out into ropes, you see, uh -huh. and then I cut them into pieces. Mm. And then if you want a little extra fancy, you go, um, you want to make sure there's enough flour so they don't stick. This dough can uh -huh. get a little sticky. And we have this little paddle, very traditional uh -huh. gnocchi board, um, and you just kind of roll it down uh -huh. like this. Uh, also, like, really fun for kids, like great hand-eye coordination. Ah. Um, oh, and I know once, awesome. you, once you taste those, you probably can't go back. So I guess I can see that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and they're just easier than potato gnocchi. So I have them cooking in back. It's really hard. Like with traditional pasta, egg pasta, it's so delicate. It's pretty hard to screw these guys up. <laughs> like they, you want to cook them till they float to the top, but if they float and they cook another one or two minutes, you're okay. You're going to end up with something very, very light. That's okay. the other thing with these. There's a lot of cheese. Okay. Um, I have my broccoli pesto on the Oof. stove here. Um, Yum. And and just and and it's got a little pasta water to loosen it up. So mm -hmm. pasta water is a really important ingredient when you're making pasta. It adds starch. It adds a little salt. And we just go right in the pan okay. here. Coat it. Right. And then how do you know when it's ready? Well, you're going to marry them together. Okay. So you're going to just toss, 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 mm, toss, mm. toss, toss, until those gnocchi kind of absorb into into the uh, sauce, and the sauce absorbs into the gnocchi, Look and they become flip. one. I was say, mine would be all over the floor. I'm just mesmerized so, right I mean, now. you should try it at home. We, yeah. You know, when we teach young cooks, we tell them to take beans home and, <laughs> and just flip beans okay. forever and ever. Oh. Um, and then we just go right here. Serve it up. Um, Look at that. The final plate. Oh my gosh. I just want a fork right um, now. Mm. And these, these gnocchi, you know, in the in the book, we have um, tons of recipes for different red sauces. The, that's like one of my favorite things in the world to eat. Missy? It's, it's just red sauce gnocchi. Missy, um, that is, a that's a parm. 10 plus. Look at that. Yeah. A little more parm. We thank you so much. Um, and we're so excited thank again. You. You're joining us from your Brooklyn kitchen, but you've got, you're the owner of Lilia and Missy, the Missy. restaurants. In New York. So thanks again. Yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Us too. For this recipe, go to today.com slash food. And for Missy's book, you can head to today.com slash shop. It's Thank called Pasta. Thank you so much. Good morning and welcome to The Boost. I'm Chanel Jones filling in for Hoda. We are kicking off your week with uplifting stories to put a smile on your face. And today, we make your mouth water. We are checking out a Beverly Hills restaurant with a secret kitchen and hidden entrance just for celebrities. Plus, we have the sweet story behind one of New York City's most popular bakeries. But we begin with a double, double take. Alba family welcomed rare back-to-back -back sets of identical twins born just 13 months apart. Jenna Bush Hager has this adorable story. It's quadruple the love for the Albas of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Identical twins Levi and Luca are 18 months. They're big brothers to four-month-old sisters, identical twins, Lindley and Lydia. The big, beautiful family began with a high school love story. We met in high school at a church camp, just two kids, you know, uh, miles and miles apart. For us, fast forward, we have four babies now. It's a, it's a miracle. And they always say, God only gives you as much as you can handle. Brittany and Frankie first miscarried before welcoming the boys in 2021. What was life like in the first couple months of their life? Our whole lives were just changed, you know, flipped upside down, but in a good way. But it didn't last long. Yeah, it didn't last long because what happened, Brittany? Six months later, <laughs> we're pregnant again. Brittany could never have predicted the news from her routine ultrasound. There's two. What? You yeah. are kidding me. You are kidding me. <laughs> He's not going to believe you. You are kidding. The girls faced incredible odds. They are Momo twins, one of the rarest forms because they share the same placenta and amniotic sac. Due to the risk, a hospital admitted Brittany at 25 weeks. Frankie held down the fort with the boys while the girls were monitored 24-7 for 60 days. 
They would listen to the heartbeat several times a day. I would literally hold my breath until I heard both heartbeats. What was it like to get to bring them home? It was surreal. It was, <laughs> I, we couldn't believe it. Riding in the car for the first time together. The Alba's new normal only works with their village of family and friends. Brittany returned to teaching fourth grade last week, while Frankie works as a firefighter, pulling 24-hour shifts. On work days, one set of the twins goes to Frankie's parents and the other to Brittany's parents. Tons and tons of bottles. The dishwashers always go in. The laundry's always going. Mm -hmm. Toys everywhere. Hi, Luca. Hi, Levi. Oh, hi, Lydia. Hi, Lindley. Double the love, right? That's right. right. Y'all amaze me. I also have to tell you the luckiest thing that ever happened to me was that I had a twin sister to walk through. I mean, now I want to cry. <laughs> that I got get to walk through life with. It's the best gift. You can see the bond. When they get excited, they turn to each other. They want to share everything. And so even if one starts to cry, the yeah. other will cry because his brother's crying. Right. You know? And so it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, I know. Okay, just the waterworks are going with our. We've got <laughs> so a twin sweet. here, right here with Jenna. Uh, look at these sweet babes. Okay, we've got the Alba family here. We got mom, Brittany, dad, Frankie, who just met four month old girls, Lydia and Lindley, sweet little angels. And we've got Luca and Levi, the best behaved 18 month I've never are. seen guys ever so seen. Yeah. However, we have grandparents off camera ready to race in. <laughs> we have a little uh, play area for them if you need to do it. Okay, so. Wow, how's it going? I can't believe you went back to teaching last week. It's going. Um, so it's good to be back at work because while this is my favorite job, I also did have kiddos at school that Aww. I needed to get back to. So it, it's nice to be back. Um, you all told me the sweetest story about the boys sleeping together for the first time. He can get, he can get down. Yeah, he can play. Yeah. <laughs> they may be running everywhere. There we go. Um, tell us about that. What they wouldn't sleep until what? Okay, well, actually, it was right after Brittany came out of the hospital. We were trying to get any sleep that we could, oh and um, they didn't sleep, actually, until they were a year old, and they actually slept together for the first time. We actually made them a bed, and they slept all and night. So and that's when they, that's wow. all they were that's when put they together. together. And so how are you doing? I just remember, you know, I have twins, and I remember when everybody left, when the village left, I was by myself, and I'm like, oh, God, it's just so much. You know, how are you feeling? How are you doing, both of you? A lot of times there's definitely that, oh, snap moment, you know, like, oh, I'm gone by myself. But um, with each other and uh, by the grace of God, we're doing, we're doing great. All right. Wow. So take us back to that moment, you know, when you realized, oh, my gosh, we have another set of twins coming. I mean, it's shocking. Wait, where are you going? <laughs> oh. uh, Come here. Yes, it was, it was definitely shocking, okay. but... Um, also, okay. for us, it was round two. Yeah. So we're like, well, we've never had just one baby, so let's do it again. <laughs> let's not do more. <laughs> um, Brittany, you told me the sweetest thing about your colleagues, your fellow mm -hmm. teachers, and how they helped you have a maternity leave, which you wouldn't have had. No, I oh, wouldn't I have had a paid maternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> Chanel's on twin yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, it's not Chanel's Look, first baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love that. Wow. <laughs> but tell us about that. No, um, so I wouldn't have had a paid maternity leave, and honestly, I only had two sick days. So um, my school system does this really cool thing where the teachers in the state of Alabama can donate their own sick days. Wow. Um, and that's a sacrifice Aww. for them so that I had enough mm -hmm. to be able to work and still pay for our insurance. Yes. Same that's thing here. Amazing. I actually, I work for TFD and those guys there, I just want to give a shout out to them because they also donated hours to me. At the fire department. Yes, yeah. I we mean, could not have done it without mm -hmm. our community. It really is incredible. I mean, we're seeing actually your whole village is out here because <laughs> oh, we've yeah. got like, the grandma, we got gr sister, cousin, everybody's like, yeah, right, <laughs> wrangling, including <laughs> Chanel. <laughs> Chanel is now an okay. official baby. That's right. I'm Auntie Chanel today. How come they all have L names? Um, honestly, once we named Luke and Levi with two L's, we were like, okay, well, we got to keep it going. <laughs> yeah. So we really loved the name Lydia. We were in church one day, and we heard the name Lydia, and we were like, oh, my goodness, we love that name. So then we had to come up with another L name, Aww. and I have a really good friend who I think is just a superhero, so I, na I named Lindley after her. Oh, that is so I will like say all coming faith. back to me. I'm sorry. Y'all's like, like, <laughs> <"Y> <laughs> faith is so inspiring, yeah. talking with you and, and knowing your love story that y'all, they met at church, church camp. camp. I love that. <laughs> you know, it's really beautiful, and I feel like your marriage has stayed very strong through this all absolutely yes, absolutely I will say that you know if you know our family you know two things you know that one we got a lot of children and two we love Jesus and so yeah. just all the glory and honor to the Lord that's a whole lot of love from one beautiful story to the next a podcast 
delivering a dose of empathy. Beautiful stories from anonymous people gives callers the chance to talk for an hour and get anything off their chest from the monumental to the mundane. And with millions of listeners, it's proving to be therapeutic for the caller, host, and audience. Sandwich delivery for Mr. Oscar Martinez. Okay. You've seen him on The Office, Broad City, yes. and Space Force, but these days, comedian Chris Gethard is doing something a little more beautiful. It's Beautiful Anonymous, one hour, one phone call, no names, no holds barred. He hosts the podcast, Beautiful Stories from Anonymous People, also known as Beautiful Anonymous. How does it work? Basically, I tweet out a phone number, people try to call from all over the world, we patch one person through, there's very little screening, and then I talk to that person for an hour. The rules? Chris can't hang up, and the caller is always anonymous. Anybody in the world, call in, talk to me, just don't tell me who you are. The anonymity is pretty crucial for a couple reasons. If I don't know who you are, then you can sort of tell me your secrets and nobody knows about it. The podcast started in 2016 and had 6.5 million downloads last year alone expanding to live shows around the world and covering everything from mental health and family secrets to first-time confessions. And she's a little fighter. She's a, she's a fighter for sure. In one episode, Love is Everywhere, a mother calls in from a hospital while waiting for an update on her daughter's cancer from the oncologist. Oh boy, this one got me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But the conversation does not always end when the phone call does, like in the case of the episode Gay Zombies Live from Edinburgh. What's your relationship with zombies now? Um, it's a, a sad one because they stopped making good zombie movies. <laughs> Callers typically maintain their anonymity, but you chose not to. Why? A really big part of it was Chris being so kind and saying like, hey, um, I think you should try this again. Jace Van Meteren, a filmmaker, tried and failed to crowdfund a zombie anthology movie series. He talked to Chris about his experience on the show and after the episode, revealed his identity. There's 100,000 people that listen to this show. If I can get 10% of them to give you a dollar, you got your 10 grand. This time, with the beautiful anonymous community behind him, Jace raised more than $16,000 and hopes to have the film by the end of the year. And the show's producers say the beautiful anonymous community provides emotional support, too. The show is like a dose of empathy. This is a podcast that helps you feel more connected. Gethard aiming to do just that, one hour, one phone call, one episode at a time. Regular people living regular lives often have mind-blowing stories to tell. And we don't slow down enough and ask each other about those. Zinclair Samoa, NBC News. Coming up, a nurse who found her calling through her own health struggles, helping kids facing their own challenges. Welcome back to The Boost. It's often said if you want to truly understand someone, walk a mile in their shoes. The program Craig Melvin is about to highlight takes it one step further, connecting students from different backgrounds in a unique way. Take a look. 
What you're seeing is a homecoming for perfect strangers. Students from a high school in rural Kentucky come to visit students in the South Bronx. Their schools have forged a unique bond through a program called Narrative 4. Hearing each other's stories. The idea is simple. Each participant shares a personal story with a student from the other school. We sat in on a story exchange between 16-year-old Charlotte Estrella from New York City and 17-year-old Taylor Allen from Kentucky. Two young women from drastically different backgrounds, each offering something very personal. Taylor sharing her story of devastating loss. My grandparents live right next door. And I always clung to my papa. He was always my best friend. And a doctor comes in, and you know, they're saying, well, we're not 100% sure, but we think it's cancer. After she finishes, Charlotte shares her own story of a scary medical crisis. But there was just this one day, it's like the feeling was like so much pain in like my stomach area. I was like crying and turns out my appendix had burst. While one and speaks, the other like the listens the and absorbs. Like like Narrative 4 operates story exchanges like these in 600 schools nationwide and across more than 35 countries. When they paired Floyd County High in Kentucky with University Heights High in the South Bronx in 2017, the students didn't know what to make of each other. Through story exchanges, the differences fell away. Soon, they were swapping recipes. <laughs> Narrative 4 was co-founded by National Book Award winning author Colin McCann. He says, inhabiting someone else's perspective helps dissolve the barriers that divide us. They recognize each other's common humanity. They'll go out into the world and they'll do something and they'll make the world bigger and, 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 and better, which is what these extraordinary young people do. And right here in the Bronx, two worlds come together by sharing stories. The second part of the story exchange starts when students recount their partner's stories as if it's their own. Taylor tells the group of Charlotte's appendicitis as if it happened to her. I'm in excruciating pain, and then that's when the doctors realized that my appendix had burst. Charlotte sharing Taylor's story of losing her granddad as if the heartbreak was hers. He started fighting and struggling a lot, and he sadly passed away. The exchange reveals vulnerability and strength. Each story arc pulls the circle closer, binding these students together by shared experiences. How did it feel? How did it go? It was an amazing experience to hear everyone's story. Yeah, I, I noticed um, while Charlotte was sharing your story, people got a little emotional. It was heartwarming to me to see all the support from people I've known for a day crying over my story. What do you think you'll carry away from this experience? No matter how different we think we are, we always have similarities and that empathy is a really big thing and everyone should practice it. Giving a piece of yourself to a stranger and trusting them to share it. This exchange is about not only about telling, but it's also about listening. When you carefully shepherd somebody else's story, that's the way that you can actually um, change the world for the better. Up next, a woman who battled childhood cancer and harnessed her own recovery to discover her calling. Hey, sister. Hi. How are you? So awesome East Tennessee Children's that. Hospital hits close to home for nurse Hannah Lawson. You look good. Especially when she checks in on young patients like Parker Cross. <laughs> Nearly 15 years ago, Hannah was a patient too. They did a CT and MRI and found the, a brain tumor that was cancerous. The NBC affiliate in Knoxville captured part of Hannah's journey, which began when her beloved schnoodle sensed something was wrong. All I remember was really Frenchie pawing at my pillow. Then came the seizures. Days later, doctors would remove Hannah's tumor. And through her recovery, she found a calling, helping other kids with cancer. The work didn't end there. Hannah recently graduated with a nursing degree, returning to work at the very hospital that helped save her life. Her own scars. I'm permanently bald on my right side from radiation. A remedy for healing when connecting with patients. 
I got to flip my hair over and show her like this is what it's going to look like and that's going to be okay. Child life you? specialist Whoa. Anna Taylor helped the seven year old Hannah through some tough times now reunited as colleagues. She always had a positive outlook on everything. What's the message that you have for kids, adults who are fighting cancer right now? See the good. It's really hard to see the good, but I think that's what gets you through it. Cancer free and thriving. Today, the compassionate care Hannah knows so well is coming full circle. Kathy Park, NBC <laughs> News, Knoxville, Tennessee. We're back with some delicious food for thought after the break. We're back on the boost with the story of one Vietnamese family building a culinary empire with dishes that are almost too beautiful to eat. Almost. Jacob Soberoff shares their journey from refugees to restaurant royalty. When I came here, I never wanted to be a chef. A celebrity chef? Mm, I know. I just want to get the food from on the children, feed them, and have a roof for them. That's all I wish. For nearly six decades, Chef Helene An's hands have been the instruments that conduct a symphony of Vietnamese taste and tradition. So much so that the Smithsonian recognized her as a pioneer of Vietnamese fusion cuisine. You're almost 80 years old. Yes. And you're still here in the restaurant every single day. Yes. So, Chef Helene, you're still training every cook yes. who comes into the restaurant yes. after all these years? On this year. Chef Helene says her restaurant empire, soon to be a global brand, wasn't supposed to be. She expected to live her life of wealth and privilege in Vietnam. That all ended when communists took over the country in 1975. In Saigon's last hours, nearly a thousand Americans and several thousand Vietnamese were airlifted out. Chef Helene's daughter, Elizabeth, who was nine years old at the time, remembers becoming a refugee with her mother and sisters, Hannah and Monique. I knew something bad was happening because there's all these people all over, crying, screaming, you know, children looking for their mom and wives looking for their husband. And then, sorry, and then coming to, to the refugee camp, all of a sudden, you know, my father wasn't with us. He was still missing in action. He was in the Air Force. And at that time, he was still fighting in the war. Helene's husband, Danny, was reunited with his family at a refugee camp in the Philippines, and they all made their way to San Francisco in 1975. What do you remember about that experience? We lost everything and we have only one apartment to stay with uh, seven people. So I said myself, I have to work hard now. A few years earlier, Chef Helene's mother-in-law, Diana, had purchased a small Italian deli there that would become the cornerstone of the family business, starting with 
a simple dish of noodles. So the garlic noodles, one of the most famous dishes on the menu here, is partially because you were exposed to Italian culture in San Francisco, but also because you were a, a student of Eastern medicine. Yeah, so I think that I had to create something that I think is healthy for people. Daughter Catherine Ahn says they passed the family taste test. We loved it, and she was like, okay, if my kids approve it, then it's going on the menu. I think her food is just very refined, light, and at the end of the day, easy to eat. The 24-seat Italian deli eventually became a Vietnamese restaurant, Ton Long. So like mom always says, you know, I find it ironic that I worked all my life so all of you kids could do everything but the restaurant. Now, why do you guys all choose to come back? We all did. Yeah, yeah. we all did that. The family of now five daughters then created five more restaurants. With the celebrity favorites, Crustacean San Francisco and Beverly Hills. On the day we visited, we ran into Vivica Fox. I love you back. <laughs> is it true that there's a secret entrance for celebrities here? There is. There, there is. is. There is. There is. It turns out there's an even more important secret. What's the deal with the secret kitchen? It's a kitchen within a kitchen. Nobody sees in, nobody sees out. You only see the noodles coming in and out. Wait, who's in? <laughs> so it's mom and it's uh, chefs that work with us. Are you there, chef? Yeah. Is this as much as, I, this is as, much as I'm going to get? And she's gone. At the end of the day, the chef who just wanted to feed her own children is now mama on to everyone. You have a secret entrance. You have a secret kitchen. What is the secret to your success? Uh, working hard. And you always think about the people and how you can make the people happy. On to some more food for thought. Two friends who are a batch made in heaven and are taking a bite out of the cookie business. Jill Martin Brooks has the She Made It story of the chefs behind Levin Bakery. It's almost half a pound. It's chock full of walnuts and chocolate chips. It's crispy and crunchy on the outside and it's soft in the middle. The cookies from Levin Bakery are famous for being delicious and decadent. And you'd never know that the business was actually cooked up by Ironman triathletes. In that training time, it gives you a lot of time to think about your life. We, in addition to becoming very good friends, discovered that we both had dreams of having our own businesses someday. You probably looked at each other and said, we could probably do anything together if we did this. The sense of empowerment that you have is really pretty incredible. I was working in fashion. I was working in finance. I um, decided to kind of toss all that and I went to cooking school. On my first day, I discovered bread baking and absolutely fell in love with that. The rest is kind of history. Pam Weeks and Connie McDonald opened their first Levan Bakery on the Upper West Side of Manhattan in 1995. We opened with our wholesale accounts, so we baked bread for restaurants, but all along throughout our training, we were making this chocolate chip walnut cookie. Mm -hmm. One day, I was at the bakery by myself and I thought, well, maybe I'll just make just for the fun of it, a batch of those cookies. And they all sold. Customers started to take notice of the bakery through word of mouth. You bootstrapped this business from the very beginning, right? So we ended up getting a small business loan, but none of the banks would give us any money. They didn't want to talk to, you know, two, two women. women starting a business at that point. But in 1997, a glowing review put Levin on the map. I was mopping the floor. Pam was in the back on the computer and the phone rang and it was the New York Times fact-checking for a story that they were going to write uh, about the, our chocolate chip walnut cookies. We immediately got calls from all over the country. People were like, how can I get these cookies? Do you ship them? And so that was kind of a light bulb moment for us. Levin was ahead of the curve when it came to their e-commerce business, starting to mail freshly baked cookies in 1999. Our UPS guy was like, oh, because we'd be like, please wait, please wait. We've got like a couple more packages. <laughs> Today, Levin has grown to 10 locations and even expanded into the frozen food aisle in stores like Whole Foods around the country. You know, there's like cliches about working with friends and family. What have you found um, from working together? I think that, that working with your best friend and somebody that you can 100% trust takes a lot of pressure off. We always say that like our biggest achievement is that, you know, we're still really good friends. For people sitting at home who want to start a business from scratch, but up, up, um, what would your best advice be? 
it's not going to happen overnight. But if you just keep, you know, putting your best out there, it will probably work out. And what's next? We're always playing with recipes and you never know when something new might up into the bakery. Coming up, the latest viral video to boost your day. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more video that's sure to put a smile on your face. Check it out. So this morning, another incredible display of sportsmanship, this time at a national cheerleading competition. This is in Dallas. Watch what happens when the music cuts out right in the middle of one team's routine. more than 10,000 cheerleaders keeping count for them from competing oh, teams. Yeah. Because when Miss you're a cheerleader, beat. you're like, five, six, seven, eight. So they were counting with them. Wow. So they can keep going. Always leaves me with a smile. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow with more of The Boost on Today All Day. Hey everybody, welcome to Start Today. Winter's almost over and we're ready to head into the new season with a spring in our step. Our Start Today community ready for a new monthly walking challenge. So for the next half hour, we're gonna share the inspiring health journeys from our community members. Plus, we're gonna bust some common nutritional myths to help us all take charge of our health and some easy workouts we can all do at home. So let's get it started. This is Start Today. I kicked off this month's challenge with some help from special guests. Take a look. March is here. That means we're kicking off our next Start Today walking challenge. So a reminder, scan that QR code for details and we'll have more in a bit. But right now, let's focus on an amazing story of friendship that began in our Facebook group. So Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox have formed an incredible bond online. But guess what? They've never met in real life. Well, we're about to change all that with a long overdue get together right here in Studio 1A. But first, more on their one of a kind connection. I don't even refer to them as my Start Today friends anymore. These are just my friends. They've made me so much better. We can tell each other our secrets and we know they're not gonna go anywhere. What's unique about this friendship? Well, for one thing, Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox live hundreds of miles away from each other. The other thing? Well, they've never met, at least not in person, that is. They each joined our Start Today Facebook group last summer, looking to make a change in their lives. I knew that I wanted to be a happier, healthier Pam. A massive transformation that started with just one little walk out my door. 
I'm more positive about myself. After connecting through the comments section in the group, they have come to lean on each other while carving their own special niche, like Pam's daily posts of encouragement. Pam is the, the sunshine rock star of the group. Happy dance, happy dance. She sings her messages. It just lights up your day. When Pam took a break from social media during a bout with COVID, Christy stepped up and sent one of her infamous care packages. I call it my happy mail because when I see it, I, it's like, okay, Christy sent me some happy mail. If I'm having a bad day, she gets a card right out to me. And when a caring voice is needed, that's the call to Doreen. Doreen is an incredible friend. She probably is the reason why I was able to change my life because she saw me when I couldn't see myself. That is how she motivates and inspires. From strangers to a circle of friends, this Start Today group now coming together for the first time in Studio 1A. We told each other no mascara that day because we're tears are going to be crying. That is so Oh beautiful. my gosh. So, so Christy, we've made you guys wait in separate places. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Yes. Pam, Doreen, come on in. Here they there's come. There's one coming from one direction. All right. Okay, and there's okay, another coming there's from Pam another direction. Over here. Christy! Oh. oh, my God! Oh, oh my God! Wait, we have a come on in. We have another. Oh, we have another. One more. Oh, oh there's a girl! Oh, my God, you guys. It's so good. It's so good. Look at you up here. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay, here, come, come on, on over take here. A come seat. sit. Let me, yes. let me Careful. scoot over. Oh okay. This is amazing. Oh my God. Like don't the, separate this is amazing. No, we won't now. separate you anymore. This is it. Oh so my goodness. What are you thinking? What does oh it feel like to be goodness. together uh -oh. together oh for the first time? We feel like family already. Oh my but to see them in friends. person and to be able to touch <laughs> on you. <laughs> You've kept us apart. Words, Tell me cry. something. Where do the tears come from? You guys come from different parts of the country. You just met over, you know, walking. Yes. Where are the tears from? Our hearts. <laughs> um, yes. Great, wonderful people. Where we've come from, what we struggled through, and where we are now, thanks to the Start Today program. Yes. What has it meant to, to be part of this group? I mean, you guys obviously <laughs> have formed this bond, but it's such a bigger group. I go on, I'm scrolling, I'm seeing these these messages and this encouragement. Pam, I've, Sorry, I've watched you. No, uh, no. I, 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 when you po when you commented on my video the first time, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Al knows me, I'm famous. <laughs> He mentioned my dogs, and the other day, Patricia mentioned me, and he had my pictures up there. My husband and I are watching, I'm like, oh my gosh, That's the amazing. lives that we've changed just by exactly. posting our positive attitudes yes. with each other. That's everything. And you guys have everything. done it. That's the amazing oh, thing. That's amazing. Uh, yes. uh, amazing. You know, uh, uh, I think we want to make this morning even better. You know, we want to bring in another Start Today member. You might recognize our, our leader, Stephanie Monsoor. Oh! Stephanie, come on in. Steph, do you want to say anything oh to these women? Gosh. You know, I am so incredibly proud Aww. of all three of you, and not only for transforming your lives, but you have encouraged thousands of other members, other Today Show viewers, to encourage and, and change their own lives. And as a, your trainer and coach, that's like the best the thing best. I could ever ask for. Yes. Not only are you making the change for yourself, but yes. once you take that time and put yeah. yourself first, you have that ripple effect. Yeah. I'm so excited yes. to meet you in yes. person, yes. too! Yes. As we get ready to face this month's challenge, it's the perfect time to hear from folks who are seeing the results and feeling better. Natricia Woods Meadows is a proud member of our Start Today community and absolutely changed her life one step at a time. For years, I made excuses about why working out wasn't for me. By 2022, I was out of shape, at my highest weight ever, and in pain from arthritis and a torn meniscus. Plus, once the pandemic hit, my walks at work turned into me sitting at home. I knew I needed to make a change, but I never felt motivated enough to do it on my own. So I called my cousin Anthony, and we decided we'd hold each other accountable to walk every day, sending our step counts back and forth to motivate each other. A few months later, I came across a Today Show story about Doreen Fox, who lost weight by walking around inside her house. I was walking around my house too, 
I read that Doreen was part of the Start Today community, so I figured I'd give the group a try myself. As I continued to focus on improving my health, I scheduled a routine physical with my doctor where I found that I was pre-diabetic. I was scared to tears, and I knew that letting myself go further was not an option. I immediately bumped up my step goal to 10,000 steps a day, and I aimed to increase my goal by 500 to 1,000 steps each month. At home, I focused on portion control and I increased my water intake. My work had only begun and I was excited to see where the journey would take me. Detricia recently visited the third hour of today and shared her fitness journey with us. Take a look. So Detricia, this is, what a great transformation. What a wonderful story. And, and I think like a lot of us, you know, there are different reasons for you taking that first step, no pun intended. So, so what was it for you? Well, for me, it was, um, I had just recently learned that two people that I, I knew growing up had passed away. Mm. And one was uh, complications of diabetes. The other one was heart disease. Mm. And we were the same age. Oh. And I'm like, I don't want to have RIP next to my name oh, right. at 50 years old, you know. And then my mom, who's 70, she was walking, uh, just walking me out the box, right? <laughs> and I'm like, my mom, 70 years old, and she's walking better than me. Oh. So I, I got on the phone, like I said, with my cousin, and we talked about it. And I'm just like, he's like, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. I said, I got to get this weight off. I know what I need to do, but I can't, I don't have the motivation to do it. But we just jumped out there and we started doing it. We set our goals and I haven't stopped since. Today is 280 for me. Oh my good, 200. Wow. In 80 days of walking. Wow. Way to go. Patricia, you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So a lot of us But you've got a glow, And too. you do. You Thank really you. do. So a lot of people watching and a lot of us and somebody sitting in the seat, you, st <laughs> you start and you're doing well, right? But how do you keep it going? I mean, 280 days, sometimes it's hard for a couple of weeks. It, it is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it, but then I, ha I have to remember my why. Your why. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for me. I'm taking care of me. Nobody else is going to do this mm -hmm. but me. So that's, I, I just make myself get, whether I feel good or not, whether I'm hurting or not, I get up and I move every so day. So where are you on your journey now? Are you still... You know, do you still have goals that you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to reach? I'm still I'm trying to get to Wonderland, as the Start Today <laughs> family calls it. I um, what's so Wonderland? Getting into the 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, the 100 pounds range. Right now, I'm sitting at 209, so I've lost 65 pounds mm -hmm. as today, um, and wow. I, I have about 20 pounds to go until okay. I reach my my first goal. Mm -hmm. So and I'll keep pushing. Well, wow. Patricia, we are just rooting you on. Thank I mean, you. congratulations. It takes a lot of hard work, but you made that first step. And no. Look Thank at you, you now. Thank you. Any, tip it up? Any tips you want to offer to people at home as far as getting started? Um, my first tip is to see your doctor, yeah. mm -hmm. talk it Absolutely. over with your doctor. Even walking can cause hip issues mm -hmm. or what yeah. have you, but go talk to your doctor first, schedule that physical so that they can see if any underlying mm -hmm. issues are going on, and then make small, realistic goals. Yeah. You don't right. want to say, oh, I want to do 10,000 steps, and then you discourage yourself right. by exactly. not doing as much. So start off with small goals, um, and just be kind to yourself. Yeah. Wow. The Stephanie Mansour call, calls in say. sick. You can fill in for <laughs> yes. your motivation. You're very motivational. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up, our fearless fitness leader, Stephanie Mansour, catching up with two dedicated members of our Start Today community and answers their health and fitness questions. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Here's some more from our Start Today community. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour is here with two members of our online community, Tanya Levy-Megney and Denise Lardy. We're going to get to, we're going to meet Denise. And just there she is, right over there. So let's get started. First of all, Steph, so what are we talking about for the month of March? Yes, so for March, whether you've got rainy weather, snowy mm -hmm. weather, or you just don't want to go outside for your everyday walk, we are going to bring that walk indoors. We are going to do an at-home walking workout mm -hmm. that consists of intervals and circuit training. So we have us walking slow yeah. and then we speed it up and walk fast. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it keeps our bodies guessing. We never know what's coming next and yeah. it helps speed up the metabolism. All right. So Tanya, you're you retired from advertising. You love skiing. Uh, uh, you're cer certified as a soccer referee. Yes, so I am. it seems like somebody who's in pretty good pretty good shape. <laughs> what's your question for for Steph? Well, I often feel very motivated when I have a purpose, when I have somewhere to go or something like that. And I have such a beautiful neighborhood, but how do I get the get up and go when I'm just tired and I just don't feel like walking my natural fast pace? Yes. So how do I like, I always thought that fast was good for your health and good for weight. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely. So if I'm walking to a new coffee uh -huh. shop or if I'm going to meet a friend, I'll walk double or triple the amount just to get there because it's exciting, you right. know, and you're an athlete. So, you know, if you add in some competitive nature to your workout, <clears throat> you're more apt to do it. So if mm -hmm. you're stuck inside, what I want you to do, we're going to go for a walk here. We're okay. going to walk for slowly for 60 mm -hmm. seconds. OK, so we'll walk around here. Right. So if you're in your house, you're going to walk slowly for 60 seconds and then you're going to challenge yourself to walk as fast as you can. Right. For the next 60 seconds, mm -hmm. you got it? <laughs> yes, do you feel like an athlete now? You're on the soccer field? I'm on the yeah. soccer field. <laughs> okay. And then after we do that, then we're going to stop and do some strength training. So we're going to do five squats. So we're going to do a squat with the feet as wide as the hips. So five times lower down, press through the heels and stand up. Perfect. Keep going. And then after we do these five, awesome, then we're going to come up into calf mm -hmm. raises. So we're going to go up onto the tiptoes. Good work. Oh. The backs of the legs five times. And then, Al, we repeat this circuit for mm -hmm. a total of 20 minutes. Okay. So we keep our bodies moving, we keep ourselves guessing, and this is even better than walking somewhere fun outside, okay. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Right. Well, why don't you go to our next, next right, station great. and our pals? Yes, all right, so we've got Denise over right. here. Denise, 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 thanks for being okay. here. Hi, Denise, for folks who may not know Denise, you're a semi-retired educator. I am. So we absolutely love that. And you also spend some time doing some stuff with the local theater, like yes, workshop, I do. workshop theater, yeah. as I understand it. Yeah. But you've, you've got some wonky knees. I do have very wonky <laughs> knees. I had surgery on one. The other one just dislocates at will. So, oh. you know. so you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> no, it's always what's, right. what's your question for stuff? So I have my rainy day. I started adding in stretching to, yes. my, to my walking routine. Thanks to you, mm -hmm. I've got my flexibility back. Hey. Now what do I do for strength? Yes. How do I do it at home? So what I want you to do, sometimes people get bored of at-home workouts, right? They sure. want that motivation at the gym or somewhere else. But for you, Denise, I'm going to have you pretend like you're an actress on stage. And for those of you at home that are more creative, I want you to just get a simple yoga mat and a, and a set of dumbbells here. I would start with three or four pounds. You can go up to 10 if you feel comfortable. Look at yourself in the mirror and pretend like you're already <laughs> having fun you're on stage you All know right. acting so we're gonna have the weights up at the ears good and then we're gonna pull the abs in press up into an overhead press good and lower down I love that big smile yes <laughs> so you're tricking yourself into having fun I want you to train your brain to but enjoy your workout yeah <laughs> so how many of these would you do so we're doing 10 of these and okay. we're gonna repeat for three sets of 10 after we go into our next exercise which is a plank now okay I'm gonna show this with Denise here we've got a modified plank for Denise because okay. she likes to do it on her forearms. So a plank exercise holding again for 10 seconds. We're going to repeat this three times throughout the workout. Perfect. Abs in, shoulders back. Good. We hold this for 10. How you doing, Craig? Doing great. All right. Can you do it on your hands? Can you can you come up into the full plank? Yes. All right. I love that. Amazing. So we hold this and then go ahead okay, and rest on your knees. Push up. Okay. So, going to show off. Oh. Wow. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Up next, we're busting some nutrition myths to help take charge of your health. Like, are fresh veggies really better for you than frozen? The answer when we return.
We're back with more Start Today, and we're separating fact from fiction in the kitchen. Registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto recently helped us bust some common food myths. So these are good. Let's kind of sort through the first one. We're talking about fresh, fresh versus frozen or even canned when yep. it comes to vegetables. A lot of people believe that it's just not as healthy as fresh. So that's not actually true. Really? So fresh is great, obviously, right. if we can get it. But it's a lot of waste. It goes bad really fast and can be really expensive. That's true. Cost prohibitive. So you can get frozen vegetables at the dollar store. My mom um, advised me it was $1.25 now, not a dollar. <laughs> so, but they are actually allowed to ripen to the peak and then flash frozen, so minimal processing. Right. Same thing with a can. If it's in water, it's totally OK. I think it just feels nothing against canned stuff, trust me, but it just feels like it wouldn't be as healthy. Yeah, it's just the narrative that's out there, and it's not mm. true. So you can get frozen, you can get canned in water, Water, and those okay. are less waste. Okay. Also, you know what's a good trick is that you cut in the middle, lay it flat in your freezer so it's nice and flat. Oh. So you can have it's a space saver, okay. and uh, you don't have a lot of waste. My only thought is for sodium. With the is that an no, issue with no sodium? So, no sodium in there. Oh, oh, you're right. Yeah. No, it says no sodium. Yeah. Stop, Stop, it's, Stop it's looking water. for trouble. What are you no, trying to make a problem? problem? Come on. No. Yeah. It's, it's no with canned things. Yeah. Well, no. Cause right. I had a, a whole meal made out of canned food yesterday, and I'm like, I felt so guilty. But it's like, no. No. All right. We're good. Okay. So it makes sense if you're watching your weight to count calories. Are all calories created equal? No. They are not all created okay. equal. So that calories in, calories out mm -hmm. really comes from the 1800s when we Ooh. developed a calorimeter and we were doing studies on small animals and small dogs. And unfortunately, we haven't really evolved that Interesting. narrative. Interesting. Okay. And so when you think that all, when you say calories in, calories out, it's right. going to say that a hundred calorie cookie pack is the same as a hundred calories of Greek yogurt. Entirely it's different. Not really. No, because this has protein. This might have fat, so it's mm -hmm. going to help stabilize your blood sugar. Where okay. 100 calories of cookies is just, just going to spike your blood sugar, crash it down, and you're so gonna, your body processes it differently. Wait, you're going to be hungrier faster. It's okay. Now, if you dip the cookie in the yogurt, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. There you go. There, there you go. Best of both worlds. I have fat. experience with it's eating hundreds brilliant. of cookies. <laughs> Fruit. Too much sugar. Not enough sugar. Exactly the right amount. What's the truth? So the truth is. Fruit is a carbohydrate, yes. and we should portion our carbohydrates. I'll portion one right now. Portion one right now. <laughs> and so strawberries are uh -huh. great. Those are lower in sugar than, let's say, pineapple, but the serving size of a pineapple is half a cup. Right. It has fiber. It has a lot of antioxidants. And if we want to stabilize our blood sugar, we would add nuts or cheese. So it's a good combo, fruit and nuts. It's like my favorite snack. Okay, that's a deal. Yeah. Think, all right. Yeah. Thanks. So here's a question. Everybody thinks carbs are bad. True or false? False. Yeah. We need carbs. Carbs uh -huh. are our main energy source. Mm -hmm. We need them for our brains. They help us feel full. Mm -hmm. And so what is the serving size of a carbohydrate? Right. It's one slice of bread. It's okay. half of a sweet potato. It's a half a cup of rice. And of course, if you feel hungrier, if you're very active, it's perfectly okay to add. But if we think about it that way and we make sure that we have non-starchy vegetables, mm -hmm. like our friends that we saw back there, right. maybe a cup of broccoli, <laughs> that's going to help us feel more full. And so we're not going to put two cups of rice on our plate. Mm -hmm. and we're just just getting warmed up because next we're going to share some exercises that we can all do while sitting down to help correct our posture. We'll be right back.
back with more Start Today and some exercises that we can all do. Grab a chair, sit up straight, and we're going to show you how to work on your posture with board-certified clinical specialist, Dr. Karina Wu. So the first one we're talking about is tech neck. Text neck. Text neck. Text yes. neck. Oh, I thought it was from when you're on technology too often. Your neck hurts. Well, both. No, either. Yeah. So it is either. kind of. That Same is, yes. thing. So how do you She always wants that? to call things what so, she wants to call them. <laughs> no, exactly. First things first is you want to put the phone in the correct place. Okay. So most oftentimes people it's hold down. the phone down uh -huh. here. It's not good for your neck. It causes okay. that pain. So you want to place the phone up towards eye level, uh -huh. but don't put your arms out because it will tire your arms. Okay. So you tuck your elbows in at your side okay. and just relax comfortable position, hold mm -hmm. the phone here. And then the next part is place your head back in space over your torso. Ah. Because for every inch forward your head sits over your torso, mm -hmm. it increases the load in your neck by 10 pounds. Do, Dr. Really? Does, it, does, does, it, does it make a difference? People are do, adjusting for their eyesight. Yes, I know. Yeah. I'm over 40. So yes, yeah. you want to put it in this general vicinity. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you so need what to do this for every, occasion. what was that? For every inch like forward, this. your head sits yes. in front of your torso. It increases the load by 10 pounds in your neck. That's, That's what causes the neck pain because all the muscles are straining. That's okay, good. so talking so, about uh, alignment, head so, alignment. So the head posture. alignment, one of the exercises we give is pigeon neck. So you're pulling the head back in space. Like that, yeah. This is when you're... <laughs> Looking like, see, I knew that was gonna come out. <laughs> are you putting your head back in space? And then you also want to place it there and just keep it there because oftentimes we are forward headed. It's kind of choking me while I'm doing forward that. I have my tie on. Okay, are you so supposed to do this? this? You don't want to cut off your blood. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. Seriously, yeah. you're supposed okay. to do that during, throughout the day? Yeah. Yes. Right. So you want to correct that. So okay. then what we want to do is we want to correct our posture. So okay. let's go I ahead do. and take a seat. Oh, yeah, how about so for hunching forward? If you, yes. Like, I'm a, I'm a hunter. Me too. Everyone is forward headed, forward shoulder. Yeah. So we yeah. want to correct it. Okay. I like to do some mobility first. Okay. So we're going to do shoulder rows, nice, easy shoulder rows. So really squeeze the shoulders up, squeeze Ooh. back, and really pull them down. That feels good. You might yes. feel things mm -hmm. clicking, popping, but this helps loosen up Ooh. the muscles for the next exercise, okay. which is gonna be scapular squeezes or shoulder blade squeezes. So okay. arms up at 90-90, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you're gonna really squeeze your shoulder blades back and then let them go. Oh. So this exercise is to turn the muscles on in mm -hmm. between the shoulder blades that helps position the shoulder blades on your torso. Chanel's because flexible. Your forward well, you're bend. flexible. Oh, look, and the control room. Oh, look at it. the control room. Very nice. See that? Look, Allie, keep it. going. I love that. How often should we do this? Like, you can do, do this several times a day. Seven five times to eight a day. reps. You know, you're not turning into an exercise session. This is for a correction of your posture. And what about core strength? I feel like that could core be part strength? of it. Yes, that's another part. But let's get moving into the spine extension because okay. poor, poor posture is a forward and down position. Mm -hmm. okay. You want to go up and back. So clasp your hands behind your head. Yep. Elbows are wide, heads resting in your hands. Yep. And then just go ahead and backward bend. So this is a great exercise because it really, oh. exactly, opens up the front Oof. of you. Mm -hmm. And then it Oof. corrects that forward and down posture by bringing your body And you know back. who's been sweating. And, uh, We're all sweating. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I can see the armpits, yes. Uh, okay. so that's well, Nate and Jer, were on. You know? Spine correction. Okay. Now let's jump into something that can help us work up a sweat. The founders of The Lit Method, Justin and Taylor Norris, stopped by to show us how to partner your workout that makes fitness fun. What's the first move we're gonna do, guys? So the first move we're gonna do is an alternating chest press with your partner. So everything's gonna be a partner theme. Take okay. a look over here. So Taylor, go ahead and grab these for me. Okay. We're gonna stand just like this. And low impact I mean, training is all about injury prevention, finding muscle imbalances. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll okay. do it. Yep, so just like this. Yeah, like, go ahead and demo. Oh, there you go. And then we'll alternate it. <laughs> just like this. What? Hey, I these was... bands are like extra They're heavy, by the way. Oh, okay. So, so if we this. want less resistance, we can come forward a little bit, just like this. I wanna look like her, so just know so let's do it. Oh, there we go. And if we so want more, this. we push back. Yep, just, just like that. that. Oh, yeah. So this is nice. We're is all it? about injury prevention. Fine. Al right there. What, you, what is Al doing Look. back there? So give me two more. <laughs> He's whispering and, here. All right, we're moving on to the next move Let's here. move on to the next one. <laughs> this one is well, a little turn. bit easier. So right. this one's going to be a row so posture here, pull. Oh, you're going to place your partner like this. No, you're supposed to hold that in. Okay. 
Yep. We're ready. We're married. Now. We're married. So I'm gonna give her the look like I okay, love you. Give you. And then I love you, Dylan. Rose. Look at me. You Chanel. can all say that, and we're just gonna do Rose. I love you too. Oh. See, it's Valentine's. We all love each other. This is great. This Perfect. is so great. I, what? I, oh. I have never here, been a part of a workout. I'm gonna like kill this. my partner. So I, give me about five more reps here. My partner's too strong. Perfect. And if you want to make it harder, just walk it. She is. Walk it back. What? What am I doing wrong? Why is she shoes? So let me ask you this. So couples come into your gym and do this together. This is. We actually have a big online platform. So oh, you can that's stream so any good. of the workouts there we online. Go. There we go. Like that. But a lot of couple yeah. of workouts online. This is cute. Yeah, yeah. should work out together online. Let's, so, move, let's move on let's, to these body on. weight, low impact moves. Let's put this down. Single arm squat. <laughs> oh, All right, guys, go ahead and face your partner. We're all going to hold hands. Opposite okay. arm. You, got it. Hands. My hands are you guys are together. Take a look. It's a slow squat. Don't make me fall. Give a high five. Oh, that's good. That hand's sweaty, too. Hey, there you go. Oh, that's good. No equipment needed. Oh, yeah. Like pulling each other? Yeah, to like balance it out. Yep. You're doing pretty well. And recover. That's good. That's good. I like that. All right. The next one is a little, a little tricky. This one's a little okay. tricky. This is Taylor's move. So okay. it's so going to be a partner push-up. We're going to go and push in. We're not doing this Keep one. Keep the core. <laughs> We're not? Come on. Al Roker's not. You got you're that. Not, you're not, you're not, not falling on, on me. Come on. You want to be the one? So Come on. One hole. What's with one you? Hold, yeah. Hang on. Let me and make sure the mat's okay. I'm pushing in. Yeah. Do it. You've got Ooh. this. Oh, I'm just waiting yeah. for it. Oh, that's a workout. That's a workout. Be careful. Exactly, because you're going to hold it. And now you push off. Oh, yeah. You want to try it? Oh, come on. See? He's got this no problem. See? That rehab's working well for you. Done. Right? Oh, that's good enough. Wait, that's good. Okay, let's go push. <laughs> that is good. Oh. All right, everyone's at 100. <laughs> Woo! Perfect. 100, Woo! that's what you suggest. 100. <laughs> and that's it for this edition of Start Today. We hope you're feeling motivated and ready to walk. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Waste. From your rotten produce to your leftover takeout containers, there's a lot of it in the food system these days. A recent study found that the average U.S. household trashes about 30% of its food. That adds up to a mind-blowing $240 billion a year, literally going in the garbage. I know waste seems like a huge problem to tackle when you're just one person, and corporations need to do their part. But a few small changes can make an impact. So today, I'm all about that low to no waste lifestyle. I'll be cooking with an expert in the sustainable food space, social star Max Lamana. Then I'm headed to a restaurant that composts all of its food waste. But first, my fridge needs a little love. So I'm headed to a low waste grocery store and it looks like I've got some packing to do. I'm about to head out to go to Precycle, which is a zero waste grocery store in Brooklyn. The thing about a zero waste grocery store is that there's no packages, so I've got to come prepared. And luckily, I love being prepared. So, I'm gonna start packing up. Precycle was started by Katerina Bogatareva in 2018. Her goal? Eliminate wasteful plastic from food packaging. In 2019, over 140 million tons of single-use plastics were thrown out globally. While bulk bins for dried goods have existed at health food stores for many years, Katerina had a different vision. A one-stop shop with everything from flour to produce and even cleaning supplies. All without single-use packaging. Why did you decide to start Recycle? Well, actually, it started with my own personal struggles to, to live a, a lower waste um, mm -hmm. lifestyle. Uh, when my son was five years old, he was in a kindergarten and he had a sustainability lesson. So one day he came home and he said, Mommy, do you know how long the plastic will remain in a landfill? And at that moment, it sort of like made me realize that 
we have a responsibility towards um, next future generations. So I took a very close look at my own trash at home and um, I realized that a lot of the waste that I create actually comes from food shopping, whether it's a packaging or food waste itself. So we can thank your son for this establishment? In a way, yes. You know, it feels like a really big challenge, right, for people to overhaul all of their life choices. It's possible to shop uh, with creating less waste in, in any store. It's just kind of seeing seeing the right products. For example, I don't know, instead of canned beans, we, one can buy dry beans in a bulk store using a fabric bag or just shopping in a perimeter of the store for um, unpackaged produce or going to farmer's market. And I think a lot of people get really excited when they go to a grocery store and they want to get everything, right? Exactly, yeah. I think shopping for one or two meals or a couple of days in advance is the key because one tends to buy a lot and then with every day that that product sits in your fridge is less likely you're going to use it um, and that creates a lot of waste. Katerina, not to brag or anything, but I came very prepared. So tell me how I get started. Okay, it's very easy. So we're gonna just weigh your, your containers okay. um, so that we know what to deduct when we check you out, all right? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Here I go. Here go. And the weight is 0.97. We're gonna write it with this um, washable marker. Oh, that's edgy. There we go. Perfect, and then you're gonna deduct this from whatever I'm putting in here. Exactly. I mean, it's so easy. Forgot containers? Don't worry. The store has a selection of glass jars and reusable bags. So Sama, what are you making today? Honestly, what am I not making today, Katarina? <laughs> but actually, I came here specifically to make a pasta. Oh, wonderful, I have a really nice selection for you. Come go. this way. So this variety is amazing. Where do you source all of these amazing ingredients from? So about 95% of all the products in the store are sourced locally and about 80 hyper-locally. So um, this pasta is from New Jersey and this is uh, made uh, in upstate New York. Wow. I also loaded up on my favorite kitchen staples like moong dal, cashews, and of course, a ton of dates. This is the only appropriate size to get some medjool dates, okay? Precycle even has extra virgin olive oil and honey on tap. Even the tofu here comes without wrapping. It feels very overwhelming on where to start. Do you have a couple easy, actionable tips for somebody looking to reduce their waste? Some of the simple ones are reusable water bottle, your own coffee cup if you go to coffee shop, or just simply bringing a bag. Or if you wanna challenge yourself, and maybe that's the next step, you can also look into just what waste you're creating and pick an item that you can replace or, or source differently that works for you. Um, I think it's a very individual journey. It's, it's the, it, there's no recipe that yeah. fits all. Single-use plastics are nearly impossible to avoid at most grocery stores. But shopping at Precycle gave me a new perspective on what's possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's nice to meet you nice and thank you for you. having me in. It also had me wondering, how can I waste less in the kitchen? Up next, I've got a virtual cooking lesson with Max Lamana, a vegan chef known for his tasty and sustainable recipes.
back at my apartment, I couldn't wait to get cooking. To help upgrade my low-waste game, I called on London-based chef Max Lamana. Max is a vegan social star who focuses on sustainable cooking, and I am here for it. Max, it's so good to see you and chat with you. We are online Instagram friends, but not real life, and this is as close as we're going to get right now since you're in London. Uh, hopefully when we meet in real life in IRL, we'll, we'll, we could be friends as well. We can be friends and we can cook in person, but for now we're cooking online. Can you talk to me about your background and also what you sort of specialize in when it comes to food? Yeah, I'm a low-way chef. Uh, I started cooking maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, my first job was in a pizza restaurant and I've kind of just worked every single position in a restaurant. So yeah, a few years ago I started seeing the, the, the problem that we, we're all currently living with because at the end of the day, it's not just food that we're wasting, it's money, it's time, it's energy, it's water, it's transportation, it's packaging. There's so much that goes into the production of food that just throwing away food doesn't make any sense. In 2019, Americans threw away over 133 billion pounds of food. The major culprits are typically fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and uh, potatoes and bread. So. A lot is being thrown away, um, but we as consumers can make small changes every day to waste less food. On Instagram, Max teaches his one million followers easy, low-waste food tips. One in particular went pretty viral. Yes, you really can eat an entire strawberry, stems, leaves, and all. Okay, I'm really excited to get cooking with you, so can you tell me what we are making today? Are you ready? We are making cauliflower alfredo. That's it. Simple. Easy. But Delicious. there is a little no waste secret because we're going to use the entire thing, right? The entire thing. Nothing's going to waste, Sama. Everything. Yes. The core, the leaves, even this guy right here, the florets. Everything. First up, prepping our cauliflower. I just have a saucepan of water behind me and that's on a low boil right now. It doesn't get much simpler than this. You don't need to prep or cut or do anything. You just literally take the entire cauliflower, submerge it in the water for about five minutes until it gets fork tender. Um, but I am gonna put some salt in there. You with me, Sama? I'm with you, but I'm just gonna chop it up super roughly before I add it into my steaming basket. You know, you can also save your leaves and if you, were, if you wanted to, you can roast them in, in the oven and they would be nice and crunchy and crispy, a little soft and tender on the inside. Without further ado, Sama, I'm, You're gonna I'm pop ready it to in? give this cauliflower okay. a bath. The cauliflower steams for about five minutes, just until fork tender. Now, on to the garlic. What you can do with garlic peelings. Um, you can actually eat the whole entire garlic peeling as well, um, but we're not gonna, we won't do that here today. You're not gonna demo um, that for me? I'm upset. I won't, I won't, I won't demo <laughs> that for you. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat that. No, I'm not. So, two things you can do. You can dehydrate the skin uh, once it gets nice and dried. Uh, you can blend it into a powdery uh, consistency, and that can be uh, basically a, a powder that can go into any kind of like soups, stews, or stir fries. The other thing I like to do is that I actually keep my peelings. Yeah, I keep my peelings and we'll make a veg stock afterwards. Max sauteed his garlic in olive oil for a subtle sweetness, but I'm leaving mine raw for a spicier kick. So I love this recipe because it, the sauce is super easy. So you're literally just adding all the ingredients into a blender. I'm just gonna cut right down the cauliflower. My cauliflower is finally done. But ta -da! Okay, so we're both adding our cauliflower, uh, florets, stems, leaves, all of the above. I will add my garlic and pasta water. Okay, so I'm gonna add my garlic in, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of my reserve pasta water, just a touch. And this will just help it blend, and also it's a nice way to not waste our pasta water. It gets everything really nicely nice and velvety. You are using silken tofu for this recipe, right? And I'm gonna right. use hummus. So this is kind of a nice alternative. If you don't do soy, you can try it with hummus. If you do like soy, you can try it with tofu. So we've got options for everyone. And what do you options. think the tofu adds to your Alfredo, Max? 
Uh, tofu is adding protein, but it's also adding another layer of creaminess as well. Maybe a lighter creaminess than the hummus, but still creamy. Do you have lemon in yours? We have lemon. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab my lemon. Yep. And I wanna ask you what you do with lemon peel. The, the peel itself has so much flavor in it. If I'm gonna use the juice, I use the zest first and then use the juice. The other thing I like to do as well, if I'm not gonna use my lemons in time, I blend the whole entire lemon. Really? With some water, and then I pour them into ice cube trays, freeze it, and next day I have frozen lemon cubes, and then I can add some, you know, sparkling water. That's really nice, I'm gonna try that. Half the lemon gets zested right into the blender. The rest is saved for later. We've got a lot of our elements in here, but now we're gonna go in with some nutritional yeast, right? A little bit of yes. cheesiness, a savory flavor. Nutrition All right, yeast. what are you adding next? I'm gonna add some vegan Parmesan. Nice. So this is cool because yeah. we've got the nutritional yeast for that cheesy flavor. You're using some vegan parm. And then the cauliflower, the tofu, the hummus, they all add these really nice, yeah, yeah, like mm, creamy mm, elements, mm, right? Mm. That's, this is, this is my preparation dance for once it's all coming together, it's like, mm, mm, mm. I had some leftover veggie stock, so I poured that in for a little extra flavor. Mm, mm, I'm practicing. <laughs> Enough dancing, time to get blending again. I just hit the switch. The two creamy sauces are complete. I'm ready for the pasta. Do you also have some fettuccine? I do. I'm using fettuccine pasta. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna probably add a little bit of the sauce into the pan to start, just to get it cool. nicely coated with the pasta, and then I'll go ahead and add the pasta in there. And then I'll go ahead and add some of the rest of the sauce. There and are some other things you can do with the sauce because there's quite a bit of it, right? Totally. So what you could end up doing with the sauce is use it for soups, use it for stews, use it for even a dip. I mean, I think having a little bit of like a, a chip in there is really good. Quite, quite nice. Okay, so I'm gonna add my pasta into my little pan and the rest of my sauce. It's so creamy. It's like luscious. Love a saucy pasta, so I love recipes that yield a lot of sauce because I'm like, let's go, you know? A gentle toss in the sauce ensures every piece of pasta is well coated. I'm, our, I'm, I'm ready to plate up, Sama. I'm ready to plate up too, Max. Okay, so I'm gonna save this pasta sauce for tomorrow, but you could also freeze it too, so that's another option. Time to give this pasta a no-waste taste. So we've got our pepper, we've got our lemon zest, we've got our salt. What do you want to garnish with, the lemon zest? Off on the side, just on top, some lemon zest. Beautiful. I'm happy with the result. How's it looking <laughs> it on your delicious. end? delicious. You know what I think we both have in common is that our phones eat before us. Shall we grab a little our photo? do eat before us. Okay, ready? <laughs> I'm ready to eat. You ready to eat? <laughs> I'm ready, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is so unexpected and so good. So creamy. Mm. That's what I was just gonna say, is that this is very, very creamy. So what are some tips that you have, some other tips for people who are looking to reduce their waste in the kitchen and while they're cooking? I think the most practical and easy thing is to cook the food you already have before going out and buying more food. Then shopping and creating a list with that shopping list and stick to that list, don't go off the list, buying other different bits and bobs, like stick to that list. Um, but before you go there, I think, find recipes that work with your schedule. Donating food is a great option, but also my favorite, compost. Composting food shows that food is going back into the earth, back into the soil to give rich nutrients to the soil, giving rich, uh, rich nutrients to the plants that grow our food. Max, this was so much fun. And thank you for doing your work and educating and inspiring people to cook and eat no waste and low waste. It's incredible. That's delicious. This recipe is going to be on repeat for me.
Composting is a crucial part of a low-waste lifestyle. At Papil Gustative in Santa Monica, the owners are committed to composting 100% of leftover food. They operate their own kitchen-to-compost facility where scraps are turned into nutrient-rich mulch. Let me show you around uh, how our low-waste establishment. Let's do it! Papil Gustative translates to taste buds in Latin. It's run by Kalen Senchak and his wife Marina. They use simple but effective methods to cut down on waste. So starting with the to-go, everything is compostable. Starting from the lids, uh, the trays, of course the napkins, and all the cutlery is made out of wood or out of compostable uh, material, paper straws. Even our uh, trash bags, if you see, is a special trash bags that are compostable as well. Even the restaurant's napkins are hand-sewn from recycled jean scraps. And to avoid plastic in the kitchen, chefs use only glass bowls and containers. And what happens, Kaylin, to maybe the fruit or vegetables that aren't perfect when you receive them? We make jams, we make pastries, and for that we actually look for, for fruits and, and vegetables that might be aesthetically blemished, right, but they are perfect. And we, we hate to see the farmers uh, have to throw those away. You have a really huge compost mission with this restaurant. Can you show me how that's kind of done back here as well? Yes, this is our own compost, which is coffee, food, greens, eggshells, avocado peels, everything else. Eggshells even? Yes, that's of amazing. course, eggshells. Eggs, eggs and coffee actually are one of the best things that you can feed the, the soil for plants, yes? Because of the calcium, because of all the other nutrients. So that's, that makes your garden beautiful. I am so excited and ready to try your food, Kaylin. Should we get into it? Absolutely, let's try everything. Let's do it. Marina and Kaylin are both passionate about building sustainable habits, which led them to the food industry. What was your inspiration behind starting this restaurant? First, we actually were inspired just to open a coffee shop. Uh, coffees and teas, single origin, uh, like really good quality. But then eventually people were asking us about more. They wanted food, they wanted breakfast, they wanted lunch, and we expanded gradually. But Kaylin and Marina are just as focused on what happens after the tables are cleared. You own the composting process from start to finish, even the facility. Can you tell me about that process from start to finish? We have this uh, little property in, in downtown where we have another company and we are thinking why don't we use that, right? So we, we did a little research and then it, it became clear that's very easy to compost if you really put your, your heart into it. So all you have to do is dig some ho holes, aerate them properly and just mix all your, your, your compost there and then eventually you can use it from growing crops. 
What do you think the restaurant industry can learn from your low waste model? Well, they will learn that it's actually very easy to do. You only have to commit, you only have to put a system in place, and it's going to make a great impact at the end of the day. You have kids, and this mission is really important to saving our Earth, right? Absolutely. We're doing it for uh, the future generation, we're doing it for our kids, we're doing it for everybody. For their kids and their kids and yes. for all the generations, yeah. The food here speaks for itself. They even have vegan croissants. This makes me so happy. I like can never have croissants. It's very important for me to take a photo of everything because otherwise I'll forget and this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. After lunch, my leftover scraps went straight into the compost bin. No food waste. In Santa Monica, California, Papil Gustative is on a mission to stop food waste. I helped load up the truck that will take their kitchen scraps to the restaurant's very own composting facility. Kevin Conaway is Papil's expert composter. Compost it up. So. Cool. The composting site is located about an hour from the restaurant. Here, they've transformed an empty lot into an urban garden. What are we doing today? What you need to know about composting is that there's not much to know. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much just layering it up. Once we put everything in, what happens in the process? Microorganisms are going to eat the food. They're going to break it down, and pretty much it'll just disappear at all. Just it'll all just be wet, and we keep it wet. Just just a little bit of water. Okay. If it gets too dry, it slows everything down. It's best to compost in a shady area, so Kevin dug up large pits by trees. But you can also compost in any kind of container, from a storage bin to a trash can. All right, Kevin, I'm ready to compost. This is everything we're composting today, right? Yep. First, we made a layer of green materials, which is basically anything left over from the kitchen or garden. Think veggie scraps, coffee grinds, eggshells, and plant trimmings. Stuff it out. <laughs> yeah, make a mess. And then I can toss the bag in too, right? That's right. Then we added carbon-rich brown materials. This can include shredded paper, cardboard, twigs, and dried leaves. And what do those layers do? What is the cardboard, the sticks? Why are we adding that to the compost process? Because if you have all, or all scraps and no cardboard or no carbon on top of it, it just turns into a mushy, gooey mess. Then, just continue alternating with green and brown layers until the waste is all used up. Okay, woo, I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. Meat, dairy, and oils should only be broken down by industrial composting facilities. They can attract unwanted pests like rats and flies in a home garden. Meat can also contain harmful bacteria like salmonella, which can spread throughout a garden's edible plants. How long does it take for a compost to break down, Kevin? Generally, anywhere from six months to a year. If you keep it moist, 
it, it'll be pretty much ready to go in six, nine months. Finished compost is a nutrient-rich mulch. It's a deep brown that basically looks just like dirt. So what have you been growing then with the soil that you kind of can create through the composting process? Just vegetables process? mostly. Okay. Yeah, what kinds of vegetables? More, yeah. Anything. Peppers, tomatoes, anything that Colleen thinks he needs for his uh, menu, then we'll plant it. This compost garden is still a work in progress, but by next spring, it will produce enough food for regular restaurant use. Kevin, it's really interesting because Vernon is such an industrial area, right? And you're literally creating a compost facility right in its backyard. You don't need a plot of land to compost. You can literally compost in an apartment, be on a smaller scale. This kind of material in a landfill, it doesn't really break down and do any good. So instead of throwing them in the landfill and just going to waste, we can recycle those nutrients, put it back into the soil. Kevin, thank you so much for teaching me how to compost. It was shockingly way easier than I expected, and I will be back to reclaim my duties as your apprentice composter. <laughs> thank you. Managing food waste is a massive undertaking, and many changes can only be made through legislation. The EPA found that less than 10% of U.S. households had access to curbside compost collection in 2017. That's a lot of food we could be saving from landfills if we just had compost bins next to recycling and trash. Some big changes are already in the works. Major cities like Los Angeles and New York are expanding city-run composting. And those advances are due in large part to individuals petitioning for better policies. Sometimes it takes local changes to kickstart a global impact. Good Monday morning, air safety in the spotlight after several dangerous incidents over the weekend. And a new train derailment in Ohio. It is March 6th, this is today.